Hello, everybody. Ah, uh, time for yet another episode of Can Sky and Remember the Voices He Gave to All the Characters. I think, I think, maybe, hopefully, possibly, it is, it is likely that I may remember some of them. I certainly remember Joseph's voice because it's so distinctive. That, that, sh that, sh that should be doable. Okay, there. So Joseph is married, right? Like he's, he's he's married. So I'm wondering a little bit how this route is going to shake out. Presumably poorly. With lots of drama. Oh yes, drama. Oh, delicious drama. Okay, let's see. Uh chat goes there. And this goes here. And that goes there yes good so how are the audio levels like am i completely audible over the music and stuff i should really not have a stream delay on dream daddy like, i don't know why i do that because like who cares if it lags a little bit Ugh. General Kenobi. <laughs> <laughs> so uncivilized. I can't really do a, a young Obi Wan Kenobi, but I can sort of do a little bit of an Alec Guinness. This is the most wretched hive of scum and villainy in the galaxy. Audio is good. Excellent. Oh, hello. That's a super. That's a thing. That's a donation, actually. I got paid, so I have my money. You should really, you should spend your money on rent first. Also, who's currently your favorite character and or route? Good luck with all the voices. Keep a glass of water nearby. Yeah. Tea, actually. I should have I should have kept some tea nearby. So far, Robert is my favorite character just because that route shakes out with a rather surprising amount of emotional maturity, which is nice. But, uh, well, we'll see. I mean, the creepiest thing about Joseph is that he named all of his children after Jesus, which is just wrong. I don't like that. <laughs> Welcome. You've got dads. Okay. So we've got Hugo, Joseph, Matt, and Craig to go. Which means there's probably, there's probably plenty of material for plenty of more streams coming up in the future. Which is nice. It's nice that this game takes a little bit longer to complete than Celeste. <laughs> which I was absolutely not expecting to burn through as quickly as I did. Brian's route was sort of... It was good, but it was good in a very different way because it takes a much more like it, the, because the arc of that particular narrative belongs to the main character. It doesn't belong to the dad himself. It doesn't really grow or change substantially over the course of the narrative, but the main character does, which which is a different feeling from something like with Robert, where the entire character arc is one hundred and ten percent his, which is also the case for uh, uh, Damien. And I'm curious to see whether some of the the other ones, like if they're if. Brian is the one exception where the character arc belongs to the main character, or if this is something that's going to be happening a little bit more. Oh, Damien is very good. Uh, I, I prefer his voice over Robert's because it doesn't kill me to do it. Uh, but... Anyway... <laughs> this is just voted Maple Bay as number one youth minister for five years running. Living in my hometown with my beautiful wife and our four amazing kids. If I'm not in church, you can catch me out in the open water, setting sails in the seas of adventure. He's so insufferable. He is so insufferable. <laughs> like, it's just like his his character in some of the the side quest things that has been kind of fine and kind of uh, slightly adorable and and perfectly nice, but like this stuff. Ah, this is just all of this is the worst. <laughs> all of this is just a person you do not want to know. Uh, anyway, let's get into it. 
Damien is my persona. Persona! <laughs> uh, those video games. I want to love them so much, but god fucking damn it, Atlas, you are so bad at so many things. Like, if they could just make a, ho a persona game without the homophobia. That would be nice. I'd like that. His family's a little weird, but Joseph seems cool. Does he, though? Does he? I'm not sure he does, but okay. I should take him up on his offer to hang out. Wait, how do I hang out with a priest? I don't go to church. Should I be Jesus-y? Walk on water? <laughs> Imagine Joseph's family staring at me as I fumble through some sort of prayer attempt. Maybe not too Jesus-y. Like, a light smattering of Jesus. Will he want me to pray? Is he gonna pray at me? Do I have to pray at him? Talking to Joseph, huh? Yeah! Amanda, how many times have I told you not to sneak up on me like that? I selectively ignore it every time you do, Pops. Amanda looks over my shoulder at the screen. Joseph can't read your mind, you know. If you want to talk, just message him. But I've never been friends with a priest before. What do I talk about? My favorite Bible passages? Ice cream socials? Khakis? Yeah. First of all, he's a youth minister with a tattoo, not a priest. There's a difference? Aww. You're overthinking it, Dad. Listen, just put it like this. <sighs> Hello, neighbor. Thanks again for the invite to the barbecue. I'd love to hang out soon if you're not too busy. Isn't that a little too... business casual? Hmm. Fine, fine, give me the keyboard, I got this. Huh. Amanda focuses on the keys. Let me just readjust my microphone for a sec here. So I can actually see what I'm doing. Oh shit, I missed most of what she wrote. Okay. Hi Joseph, it was great meeting you and your family. I'm still new around here, so if you'd like, to, like I'd love to hang out and get to know you. See ya. The smiley's a nice touch. Almost immediately, I receive a response. What do you say? Hi, Sky, and if you're not doing anything in a bit, the kids and I are baking treats for the church bake sale today. Oh my god! And I'd love to have you over. It'll be a blast, so let me know. Ah, yeah, that wasn't so bad. He uses a lot of exclamation points. Hmm. I'm more concerned about his signing the name with a tilde. L hey, listen, that's a legitimate way to sign off your emails. Maybe, maybe not your social media chats, but... Uh -uh. I'm willing to let it slide this time. I respond back. Sounds like fun, Sky. <laughs> Great, come by the house as soon as you're ready. We'll be there. Oh, uh, we'll be here, rather. Well, I guess I'm doing this. Uh? Save a brownie for me? Promise you won't sneak up on me anymore. Amanda stares at me, unblinking. I don't make promises I can't keep. Real to a fault, Pops. Ugh. And Dad, please don't be weird about the religion thing. Me? Weird? Never! I make the short walk over to Joseph's place. Don't be weird, Skyen. Oh, too late already. <laughs> but what if they hang up a bunch of crosses? Or collect those little porcelain babies? What if they're all praying? What if- do they pray before dinner? During dinner? Over porcelain babies? The door begins to creak open. A shadowy figure obscured on the other side. Who's that? Uh, Skyen? The door opens the rest of the way. It's Joseph's eldest- what's his name? Hey. Hey, uh... Chris? Hi again, it's... I'm Skyen. I know what your name is. Oh yeah, we met at the barbecue. How's the... Uh... Please don't say it. Jesus? Chris blinked slowly. Maybe he didn't hear that. You're weird. Is your dad... Before I finish, Chris walks into an adjacent room, leaving me in front of the open doorway. Home? Well, that was a great first impression. For a moment, I wonder if I should just go in, further subjecting Joseph's family to my winning attitude and artful charisma. <laughs> Mercifully, Joseph peeks his head around the corner. Oh. Skyen, you made it! Joseph approaches with his arms wide. That is creepy! Don't do that to strangers! <laughs> I'm so glad you could come by! Are you ready to bake? I am not. I'm as ready as I'll ever be? <laughs> That's the kind of semi-confidence I like to see in a baking assistant. Come on in! He's turning more into Snagglepuss with every word I say. Come on in, even! Okay. Exit! Stage ride! <laughs> Joseph leads me into a bright, spacious home full of nautical knickknacks. This isn't what I imagined at all. It's actually pretty charming. Uh, I believe you met Chris, who left you outside. Oh. Chris? Are you going to apologize? 
Oh, right. Sorry. I try to make eye contact with Chris, but he keeps looking away. He must be really shy. Yeah, or really possessed by Satan. This is, they're demon children, I swear to God. It's all right. Next time, just be a bit more inviting to our guests, okay? Sure. Chris seems to relish the chance to escape the conversation and quickly vanishes into his room. Joseph turns to me apologetically. Yeah. Don't take it personally. Chris likes to keep to himself. I mean, we didn't start off on the best foot in the world. Plus, being the eldest in a big family can't be easy. <laughs> we try to cut him a little slack where we can. Oh, and here are the twins. Christian, Christy, say hello to Sky. They're so creepy! Why are they so creepy? Hello, father. Hello, Sky. Hmm. Kids, come on, dial it back on the creepy twin stick. Creepy twin stick. Oh, that's me. Creepy twin stick. Egg them on. Yes. Even if it makes him mad. Can you just say, come play with us, Danny? Oh, no. The twins stare up in unblinking unison. Come play with us, Danny. <laughs> Joseph covers his mouth and looks away, but he's clearly holding back a big laugh. This is it. This is my dad world series. Okay, now say, please help us, Mothra. <laughs> please help us, Mothra. No. That's a deep cut. <laughs> I can't take it. Joseph is trying his best not to break in front of his kids. The twins seem to be catching on and look eager to bust their dad. But can we keep it up? Definitely something obscure. Like more Godzilla movies. But creepy. Now say, they all float down here. They all float down here, father. <laughs> Joseph can't take it anymore. Despite his quiet protestations, he's laughing pretty hard into his hand. And his kids giggle with him. The twins, obviously pleased with a new arsenal of spooky weapons, leave the room to terrorize the rest of the community. My work here is done. <laughs> I'm gonna be hearing those lines for weeks. Next time we hang out, I'll try and teach them some lines from The Thing. <laughs> Alright, so it looks like we've got a big old troublemaker on our hands. You think you can out-trouble a career pro? I don't know about that. I'm suddenly interrupted by a loud crash from the kitchen. What now? Hmm. That doesn't sound good. Christy? No one responds. Joseph furrows his brow and motions for me to stay where I am. Wait here a minute. Joseph rushes into the kitchen. I remember this with Amanda. Half of fatherhood is trying to keep your kids from finding creative ways to kill themselves, and he's got four. Talk about worry. I take a seat on his surprisingly pristine couch and twiddle my thumbs. Let's examine the bookshelf. It's a pretty certain wooden bookshelf. I meant the stuff that's in it, you dumbass. Oh my god. There's a pretty sturdy woody book, wooden bookshelf. It looks handmade. Did Joseph build this? There's a big stack of what looks like travel magazines. Hyenas of the Serengeti, the underwater mysteries of the Arctic, and on and on. Seems like Joseph really loves a good adventure. Unless this is a Mary thing. Who knows? Next to them are a couple of different Bibles. Looks like he's covering all the ba Bible bases. King James, New American Standard, the Bible for teens? Well, he's a cool youth minister after all. I always preferred the King James Bible, just because the prose is so much more highfalutin. On a higher shelf, there are a bunch of old romance novels. Judging by the wine stains, these must be Mary's. The newest one looks like Hot Body Johnson, Sex Detective. The eighth installment in... Wait, this is a series? There's a couple of cool knickknacks on the coffee table in front of me. Hey, a cross. Hey, another cross. This one looks a little different. And a third cross. Well, unified design aesthetic, smart choice. There's also a brass thing here. It looks like something a sailor would use to navigate with. I think they're called sextants? Oh, cool. <laughs> Sex. Well, you have this many kits and things are bound to end up on the floor, no matter how hard you try to keep it clean. I spot a terrifying cloth doll that appears to have had both arms pulled off several times. It's been stitched back together a lot. It, it's just, there's no way there's no demons in this house. The tag says C plus C, of course. I set that down and spot a houseplant. Hey, little guy. Keep being you, tiny houseplant. I spot one last thing on the floor next to the houseplant. It's a silver necklace. Wow, this looks expensive for something so casually tossed on the floor. If there's a story here, it's none of my business. It's been a while. I guess I should go in the kitchen and see what's up. Oh.
I walk into the kitchen to find Joseph holding Christy in one arm. She seems a lot calmer than she was a minute ago. <clears throat> I raise an eyebrow at Joseph. Oh. The twins are a lot more manageable when they're separated. Where's Christian? He ran off. Christy dips a spoon into the brownie batter and gives it a taste. Dad, it's too sweet. Oh. You're too sweet. No, I'm not. <laughs> You're so sweet we might have to water you down with spiders. No, not spiders. Joseph begins tickling Christy with his free hand. Between the laughing and the squirming, I don't know how he's got a hold of her, but that girl is locked in place. The man is a professional child wrangler. Christy fixes me with her best poppy dog eyes. Save me from the spiders! <laughs> Renegade option. <laughs> Sorry, Christy, but I've been working with the spiders the whole time. No! <laughs> they bought my allegiance with the promise of flies. All hail the spiders! <laughs> Joseph grins and continues his tickle torture. No one escapes the wrath of the spiders. After a few seconds, he relents and puts Christy down. She immediately retreats behind his leg, where she watches me quietly. Christy, don't you want to make with Skyen? Christy vigorously shakes my her head. It must be my alliance with the house tickle spider. <laughs> oh. Are you sure? You'll get first dibs on the biggest piece of brownie. Christy hesitates, then shakes her head no again. Sparkle pony. Uh. Ouch. Joseph covered up his disappointment quick, but that looked like it hurt. Uh. You don't want to bake with Dad now? You want to play with Sparkle Pony? Yes. Okay, go. Before Joseph can even finish his sentence, Christy's out the door and down the hall. Oh, hello, chat. I see there's some disagreement over whether Joseph is hot or not. <laughs> I mean, personally, I just... I can't not associate that just general look with, like country clubs and like tennis bros and old money and stuff and it's just like blah, blah, blah. which is why i find it so creepy because the character design here is clearly playing into that it's playing really really hard into that sort of uh regressive back to the 1960s not the 50s back to the 1960s uh domestic idyll vision thing which is so, like, which is so Stepford Wives. Like, it's so whoo, associated with so many bad things because I've been steeping in pop culture for the last 30 years. <laughs> Joseph sighs deeply as he stares into the chocolate batter. He tastes it again, face twisting. And that is still way too sweet. So what made that crash? Egg beaters on the linoleum floor. Oh. It's my new techno single. Still haven't thought of a B-side. Now we're both looking into the batter. It's got a sickly sheen of sugar and chocolate candies throughout. And I have a feeling Christy had something to do with it. We need a fresh start. Oh, uh, yeah, like I said, I'm not really a baker, but... Whoa. Don't even sweat it. The bag came with instructions that have mysteriously vanished along with my daughter. So we'll probably be fine. Probably. Hey. Yeah, probably. He certainly looks confident. All right, Sky, and you've baked a cake from, from a box before? Once. How hard could this be? <laughs> now grab a spoon and get ready to rock. Mario Batali, save me. Ooh, ooh, dated reference. Oops. Ooh. Joseph and I set to work cracking the ed eggs and mixing the things and then pouring the things according to how we assume the back of the box would tell us to. Things go according to the plan and soon enough we have a solid batch of brownies. Eh. Phew. Wait. Joseph has a little dot of batter on his nose. Well, Skyn, way to use those dad skills. I bet you've baked a few box mixes in your time. His nose... Joseph, all we have to do is bring these to the bake sale and voila. <laughs> now help me find Christy. Keep your eye out for a pony that sparkles. J Joseph, hold still. Hmm. What? Thumb in position and got it. Joseph's eyes go wide as I gently wipe the chocolate off his nose. Is he blushing? Oh, I have, I have thanks. No problem. In less than a second, I've licked the batter off my finger. It's really good batter. Yeah. We, um... We should find Christy. Yes, we should. We should do that. Gun. Joseph quickly composes himself. All right, she can't be far. You take Delta position, I'll watch her six. Do you even know what that means? Alpha Tango Sparkle, roger, roger. Joseph starts making his way down the hall and calls back to me. Just a second. <laughs> Ugh. I just, 
Joseph is so aggressively chipper and so aggressively positive and upbeat and it's just like, yeah, please be sad about something. Have an emotion. Take the brownies and the rest of the stuff I baked earlier today while I get Christy. We'll meet you out by the car. Joseph, Christy, and I arrive at the church parking lot to find fold-out tables and pop-up tents already set up. Looks like the bake sale is already in full swing. Huh, that's quite a nice background, actually. See, shapes like, uh, like tents like these can actually be really deceptively difficult to do because what you're constructing is basically like the, the, the tarpaulin that hangs over the frame of the tent thing is essentially a box. But the shape on top of it, that triangular shape, uh, that, that uh, uh, four-sided pyramid shape, it's really deceptively hard to make that come across as the shape of the thing on the inside. I've, I've tried to draw these things before, and they've done a really good job with just that little line of light and shadow and crease line in the back there to sort of imply the tension. Because that's the thing, is that this is stretched fabric, which is really can be really just treacherously difficult to draw correctly. Uh, but this is just this is just nicely done, actually. That, that's a small thing that I find really hard that I always like seeing other people manage to do really well. Oh. <laughs> wow, this place is packed. Is this packed? There are a few people milling around. Must be a value pack. Oh. If you can count a city's population on your fingers and toes, this count as, counts as packed. Point. Christy rockets out of the car and into the lot. Is she running on jet fuel? I want to sell brownies! Okay, okay, let's get set up. I want to see Mom! She's down by the other row of table help tables helping out with another group. Want to go over there and tell her I said hi? Mom! Christy sips off immediately. Joseph seems unconcerned. Does she always run that fast? <laughs> yeah, and I can only catch her half the time. These knees aren't what they used to be. I don't even know what his canonical voice is in this game, but he's Snagglepuss now, and he's gonna be Snagglepuss forever. I remember when Amanda was her age. I couldn't get her to sit still for five seconds. Oh. Yep, great age to deal with. While Christy's gone, Joseph and I arrange all our baked goods on the table and settle in. So, are we allowed to eat any of our own goods? Oh. Look, if I don't see nothing, I don't say nothing. The man upstairs has strong feelings about snitches. Does he actually? Oh. Joseph shrugs. He eats a brownie. It looks like some of the other stalls are selling drinks, little handmade crafts, and other sweets. Oh, someone brought a soft serve ice cream machine. I gestured to it. How are we supposed to compete with that? Oh, please, this isn't my first time to the rodeo. The bake sale rodeo. Hmm. There's actually no rodeo here, it's just a, a, a bake sale. <laughs> I think you can put, you and I put together can make one pretty convincing argument for these brownies, don't you? <laughs> Well, this is, yeah, this is more honest. That's probably what he wants to hear. Yeah. <laughs> I reach for another brownie to stress eat my worries away. Joseph smacks my hand before I can grab it. Focus, Skyan. It's not long before we have our first customers. Yeah, I knew that would happen. Hey, hey dude. Hiya. Ah, Carmen Cena, great to see you guys out here. Hey. Happy to support a good cause. Plus, you know, the owner and proprietor of the Coffee Spoon, an establishment that specializes in baked goods. I have to scope out the competition. Joseph leans close to me. This guy knows his stuff. Stay on your, your toes. So, what recipe did you use for these brownies? Don't say use the box recipe. Don't say use the box recipe. It's just how Nana used to make. Let me tell you a story, Matt. The way they made brownies in the old country? Yeah, that was all thanks to Grandma Rice. Travelers from far and wide would make the pilgrimage to her sleepy little town, simply to be amazed by her masterful use of chocolate. All that knowledge, all that experience, it was passed on to me. Hey. <laughs> sure. Joseph leans over again to me. Lying is literally one of the ten things we try not to do. Oh, come on! You straight-laced dickhead! <laughs> hey. All right, all right, we'll take two. Actually, we'll take three. I ring them up and high-five Joseph as our happy customers walk away. See? Not so hard. Yeah, I'm hot off the good feelings from the last sale. Who's next? You straight-laced jickhead. Like, oh my god, Robert, please save me from this guy. We sell brownies to a bunch of people I don't recognize, but who clearly know Joseph. Eventually, another familiar face pops up. Skyen! It's Brian. Close enough. Can we interest you two in any of our fine sweets and treats? Uh. You sure can. Bet I could eat ten brownies. Must resist 
Urge to be competitive? <laughs> Let the man buy your brownies. So we'll put you down for ten? Uh. Ha! Better make it just two. One for me and one for Daisy. Coming right up. You excited for a youth group movie night, Daisy? Yeah. What's the movie? It's a surprise. Joseph leans over to me. It's the Fast and the Furious. Really? Yeah. If you think about it, there's some heavy religious undertones. Joseph hands a baggie to Daisy. I made sure to give you guys the edges. <laughs> Clearly the superior part of the brownie put topography. Thanks, Joseph. <laughs> our two customers walk off with their purchases. Joseph and I survey our stock. These are selling pretty hot. At this rate, we'll have enough money to pay for the new paint job on the church pews in no time. Wait, what happened to the pews? Ernest spray-painted his rapper alias onto them. Young Steinbeck. Oh my god. Really? <laughs> Young Steinbeck? Oh my god. <clears throat> I would have gone for Young Man in the Sea, but I can respect that. Speaking in ministerial terms, Ernest is hard to reach. In father terms, Ernest is kind of a turd. Being a cool youth minister seems like a lot of work. It is, but it's worth it. Although, sometimes I wish... Never mind. What? It's kind of silly, but... Do you ever wish you could just drop everything and go lounge around on the beach somewhere in the tropics? Drink fruity blended beverages? Fall asleep on a hammock? You know, basically live out a Jimmy Buffett song? Joseph, I think about this every single day of my life. <laughs> my dream is to live in Margaritaville. Oh my god, my character's so boring. One day, my friend, one day we'll be on island time. We make a couple more sales to some more church patrons. Everything seems to be going smoothly. Off in the distance, I spot my old buddy Craig. Craig! Hey. He's gonna be a hard sell. Craig's a fitness man. I think he comes to these bake sales to test himself, to see if he has the resolve to refuse... Oh, goddammit. Processed sugar. Are you sure you're ready for this? We go way back. I got this. Craig jogs off to our table with Briar and Hazel in tow. They're each finishing an ice cream cone, so it's unlikely we're gonna sell them on brownies, too. Probably won't be able to sell to the baby. She's impossible to read. It all comes down to Craig. Oh. Hey, bros. Hi. Hi, Uncle Joseph. Hi, Amanda's dad. Would you be interested in one of our delicious homemade brownies? Uh, I don't know. See, <laughs> tempt him is because temptation is bad for Mr. Christian man over here. So I guess we won't do that, even though that's what I really want to do. Hey, Craig, when we were freshmen, remember how our next door neighbors pranked us by switching out our laundry detergent with dish soap and how the washing machine exploded with suds? And then we decided to get back at them by baking brownies for them, but sprinkling high-intensity hot sauce into the mix and then we watched them cry after eating it? Oh, this is probably not going to help. Hey. <laughs> I would feel better. I feel bad, but we had to clean the laundry room ourselves. Anyway, these brownies are like that, but without the hot sauce. Maybe you should get one. One more, for old time's sake. Oh, no. Craig thinks for a second. Well, uh, <clears throat> how the hell did I forget his game? The girls just want a game. You know what? We'll take one for each of us. Even River. Oh. All it has. Hmm. You've got yourself a deal. Well, I managed to make up some ground at the end. <laughs> God damn it. The day winds down and we're pretty much out of items to sell. Everyone starts packing up. Christy eventually comes back and immediately falls asleep in Joseph's folding chair. Box mix, huh? Oh, Mary saunters up to us. She looked like she'd rather be anywhere else than here. <laughs> oh, hi, honey. Yeah, they're selling like hotcakes. Which is... Well, they're actually they're just brownies. Cute. Oh. And boring. And safe. Uh, hey, Mary? Mary's eyes dart over to me. <laughs> What's the rookie doing here? I was just hoping to introduce Sky to the rest of the community. Uh-huh. You got a load of this freak show? What? Hey. Weird folk is all. Holier than the <clears throat> Holier than thou types. Mm. I keep forgetting Mary's voice. She has 15 voices. Why not? Don't you think, Sky? Yeah. Mary? Uh. The kid answered the question. Yeah, I need to figure her out again. <laughs> uh, we have to be boring and nice. Uh, I don't want to be boring and nice. I want to be a m massive bastard. They, uh, they all seem like they're really excited to help out the church. That's pretty cool, I guess. Hmm. Mary, can we talk about this later? 
Oh, am I embarrassing you in front of your new friend? Joseph doesn't, doesn't respond, trying his hardest to keep his cool. Can we please talk about this later? Mary. Yeah. <clears throat> sure thing, honey bear. Mary turns her attention to me. Hand over the cash. Uh... Jesus, I'm not trying to rob you. I'm charging the funds here. I hand over the cash we've made. It feels like a hefty wad, if I may say so myself. Please don't say the word wad. Oh. <clears throat> Thanks. Oh. Now give me your wallet. What? Hey. Give me your wallet. You think this church is going to fix itself? Oh. Mary. Hmm. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Sorry. I'll work on the whole pretending to be happy thing. Mary leans in and whispers oh. to me. He's really good at it. Mary walks off without saying goodbye. Yeesh. Do I sense some vague resentment between Mary and her husband? Do I sense a marriage that may be a little bit on the rocks? Do I sense some tension there that might be expressed, perhaps, in an ill-advised affair with a neighbor that never really should happen, but which happens anyway, and which leads to all kinds of emotional distress? Is that what I'm sensing right now? Is that where we're going? Okay, I guess that's where we're going. I'm really sorry about that. She really likes pushing your buttons, huh? Joseph shrugs. Aww. No, marriage is perfect. You ready to head out? I get snotty every time I'm streaming. Every time. I don't know why. Joseph and I load the folding tables back into my car. Christy nods off the moment Joseph straps her into the car seat. Hey. I drop Joseph off in front of his house. A small yawn sneaks out of me. Looks like I tuckered you out, huh? I'm a sleepy dad. I think I might finally be crashing from all the sugar. Oh. Huh, I won't keep you up then. Thanks for helping out today. Happy to do it. Also, happy to eat brownies. <laughs> and lie to people in front of your face! You creepy jerk! Well, next time I promise we'll do something a bit more exciting and a bit less free labor. And I'm very sorry about the whole thing with Mary. You shouldn't have had to see that. It's fine, really. Yeah. I know, but first hang out. Domestic problems aren't a good look. You barely know me. Yeah. Let me make it up to you next time. It won't be Margaritaville, but we'll do something fun. Promise. I smile. I like that. Hey. Would I? Would I, though? I'm not sure I would. Oh, and one last thing. Joseph tosses a cling wrap brownie through the window. It hits me in the face, but I'm able to catch it. Oh. It's the last one. You earned it. Joseph, please don't leave me alone with this brownie. Nope, too late. I'm already walking away. But... <laughs> Bye! Joseph walks up to his home. He waves at me before carrying Christy inside. Well, looks like it's just you and me, Brownie. Delayed gratification. I pocket the Brownie. This might come in handy down the road. Huh. <laughs> I step inside to find Amanda doing ho homework on the couch. Hey, father unit. Hi, child that I am required by law to care for. How is homework? Huh. It's really fun and educational. Really? How long have you known me for? Right. Mm -hmm. How was the bake sale? Good. I think I really could have made a good life for myself as a brownie salesman. Okay. Glad to hear it. So, so what? Mm. Were there any extra brownies? Or did you maybe sneak one? Or... I think for a moment and realize that I still have the brownie that Joseph gave me. This would probably do better in someone else's stomach than mine. Heads up! What? Wait! I hurl the brownie towards Amanda. It hits the wall behind her and falls on the ground. Why would you do that? Yeah. Nice throw. Uh. She scoops it up and smiles at me. Yeah. Thanks, Pops. Okay. Hey, if you're not going to bed anytime soon, would you be game for some real shark hunters of Orange County? I thought the last hunter got eaten by a shark. Mm. He did. I sit down next to her and cozy up with a blanket. Awesome. <laughs> the merry points are zero. Thank you so much. Welcome. You've got dads. And Craig. Well, we will just shave the game, and then we'll see what Craig is doing. I don't. I've got the runs. Ooh, I've got just the thing. I'll head to the store and grab you a real chunky milkshake, cherry licorice, and a book of work jumbles that I find helpful in strenuous times such as these. What? Wouldn't that make it worse? Oh, it's not for the diarrhea. Milkshakes are just comforting. Wait, why are we talking about this? I buy, I've got the runs. I meant that I feel like running. Wanna come with me to the gym? 
Why do I feel less excited about that than getting you home remedies for diarrhea? Why, why would you continue that line of conversation when it turns out that's not what he meant me? Why would you do that, you awkward idiot? <laughs> Come on, man, it'll be fun. You know what? Sure. When are we doing this? There's 30 more minutes left in this meat hell marathon. I'm outside right now. I'm warming up. Okay, okay. Why do I eat, drink Coke when I'm streaming? It just makes me burp. At least let me see if Betty gets away from the wolves in time to, to get her Soprasada wrapped cheesecake out of the oven. Go running. Okay, yeah, great idea. The gym just installed these new virtual jogging treadmills. We'll feel like we're running outdoors. Bro. You can see the other runners on your screen too. Let's try it out together. Other runners? Will I be able to keep up? Don't worry, we're here to cheer each other on. I'll be right there with you. Nice. Just get a rhythm going, keep your heart rate up, but don't overexert yourself. You'll do great. So wait, what do I do? Oh, okay. So I guess don't max out the meter too much. And just kind of try and keep up. Am I supposed to just rapid click here? Because... <laughs> it's nice to play Wii Sports for a bit. <laughs> They've managed to mimic the musical style of that game really well. Bro. Oh, uh, okay. I guess we're just clicking on stuff. Dude. Oh, you can get a repetitive stress injury from this. Oh, Lord. I wonder if you can play this with a controller instead. <laughs> the waterfall is sweat emoji. <laughs> of course it is. But yeah, like most mini games in this game, it's not really super engaging or anything. It's more like a little basic side distraction. Of which there's not much interesting to say. Like, it manages to mimic this, the style of... Of your Wii Fits and stuff really well. Cool. <laughs> Apparently that was an S++. Way to go. Welcome. You've got dads. Anyway, that happened. <laughs> that didn't seem to do much. All right, back to Joseph. Oh, Lord. It's been a long day of clipping coupons. Looks like there's a sale on boxed brownie mix. Huh. That reminds me. I wonder what Joseph is up to. I should see if he wants to hang out. Or if he wants to go to the store with me and use these coupons. Looks like he's online. Hey Joseph, wanna hang? It takes a moment for Joseph to respond. 
Skyen, hope you finally recovered from your brownie-induced coma. And I know I promised you a fun hang, but tonight I'm actually chaperoning a youth mixer. Amanda's invited, of course. If you're not doing anything, you should come. Oh, that sounds nice. And be a chaperone with me, because I need the help. Less nice. I think for a moment. I'm a little bummed out, of course. I suppose I just wanted some me and Joseph time. Maybe to get to know him a little better. Ah, what the heck. My friend needs my help. I type back. Buddy, if you need me, you got me. Just tell me where I need to go. Or be tonight. Joseph lets me know the details. It starts pretty soon. I should get ready. I knock on Amanda's door and peek in. <laughs> hey, Amanda. I'm about to head out. Where you off to? Are you gonna go extreme couponing? I'm actually gonna go chaperone this youth mixer dance thing that's happening at Joseph's church. He says you're invited, but if you don't want to come, I'll cover for you. Mm, you know what? I'm down. Maybe I can make some new friends. That's a good attitude. Yeah. But I'll have you know that I'm mostly doing this for the potential of free food. Thank you, Amanda. You get four daughter points today. Mm. Can I trade them in for a daughter lava lamp? Sorry, you only have enough for a daughter spider ring. Or some of those daughter plastic jumpy frogs. I like those things. They try their hardest. They try their hardest. It's inspirational. <laughs> we arrive at the church to find that. No, I did. Who wrote that banner? Who wrote that banner? Who wrote it? Who wrote it? And how do we put them in jail? <sighs> there are decorations and balloons and banners and everything, but no youths. Hmm. Hmm. I've been to a couple of dances in my life, and not that I want to paint myself as some sort of dance expert, but generally dances require people. And those people need to be dancing. All of a sudden, Joseph jogs up to us. He looks frazzled. You're here. I need your help. Joseph gestures to the hand-painted banner hanging above the church doors. It reads, Jesus is coming. What? Yikes. Well, that's certainly a thing. God made all things, Amanda. Except for the banner. Ernest made that. I, I genuinely can't tell if he meant that maliciously or just can't spell good. You know what God also does? Forgives. He forgives teenagers and he never, ever breaks their box mods. Are you going to break Ernest's box mod? No, Amanda, that would be a sin. I think... I think. It's the one right after Sloth. Skyne, I need your help getting this down before anyone sees it. I can swing that. Amanda, can you help? Physical labor, huh? Hmm. Amanda begins rapidly scanning the mostly empty room, looking for an escape route of her own. I have to go set up the food. The food's already set up. I'm going to do a final inspection pass on the food to make sure it's up to code. I'm going to eat your food. Amanda is able to bolt away before myself and Joseph can get another word in. <gasps> yeah, since she can really book it when she wants to. Her father was a giant pair of legs. <laughs> I dated some giant arms once, but it turned out they were all right. Oh, for God's sake! For God's sake! Uh. Okay. Lamp, turn on. So I can see stuff. It's getting dark. You must have been devastated. <laughs> it was Armageddon. I will punch you. I will. No, it's... I get it. I'll workshop it. There's a gem in there somewhere. <laughs> I'm really glad you're here, Skyen. Are you enjoying my company, or did you just lure me out here for my strong arms and height advantage? <laughs> no, a little of both. It's always something with you, Joseph. <laughs> something handsome and pious? You're not that pious. Debatable. You just alluded to breaking a child's vape pen. Oh. I would have lost the debate. You ready to do this? Let's make some magic happen. Magic isn't real, Sky, and God said that. Seriously! God was also a bush one time. Oh, true. Joseph and I grab a stepladder and walk over to Ernest's banner. That turd Ernest had one final trick up his sleeve. Looked like his nightmare is stapled and taped six ways from Sunday. Any ideas? What happened to your strong arms and height advantage? Ah, right, I forgot about those. But I realize my oversized dad fingers are far too large to get leverage on the tiny staples. Staples. You got a hammer I can use to pry these off? <laughs> Skyen, this is a church. We get a little nervous around hammers. And nails. Oh, it's a crucifixion joke. I get it. Okay. Hey. I'm kidding. We just don't have a hammer. 
But we have to hurry. The youths will be here any moment, and I'll never hear the end of it if we don't fix this. Wait, I have an idea. I'll run to grab the marker that Ernest used to draw this thing and jump back on the ladder. We can't get it down, but we can send a different message. I only got one shot here. Let's do this right. Listen. Listen. <laughs> Jesus is cumin! <laughs> Jesus is... <laughs> I want to do the bad one so badly. I just want to fuck around and this goddamn straight-laced... pink-wearing, white-ass, goddamn... Gah. I'm able to turn the U into an A and an L somehow. It's a little tight, but it works. Well... That's true, I guess. Bask in his calming presence, Joseph. Relax. Crisis averted. Let's just hope the youths don't notice. And you can just... I, you, I, I imagine his voice and I can just hear that capital Y slot itself into place, like, mechanically. The youths. Ugh. Joseph checks his watch. And by the way, I'm going to be shitty about Joseph the whole time. <laughs> just because he's just a character type I don't enjoy. But it's fun to just mess around. Mm, the DJs would be here by now. Just then, the door swing open and a man struts in with his DJing equipment. Oh. Wait, you're not the usual guy. What happened to Evan? Evan knew exactly when to play the Cupid Shuffle. Oh, hang on. No, don't restart, you dumb computer. What the hell was his voice? I don't remember. Hi, hi I'm not Evan. Evan sold all his DJ equipment to Backpack 3 Europe, so I'm filling in for him. I do envy him, though. What I would give to drop everything and start over. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah. Are you all right? All right. I am better than all right. I am DJ Spin Master Quinn. He sighs heavily. I usually do trivia nights, but I moonlight on the ones and twos to give myself a sense of purpose in life. Is he okay? <sighs> well, you'll have to do. You have a playlist of fun songs that the youths will like that won't inspire impure thoughts or tempt them to the dark side, right? The DJ thinks for a moment. Hey. Believe me, buddy, I got what you need. Hey. Okay, great, I'll let you get set up. The DJ leaves. Let's keep an eye on this one. He sounded like he was just gonna play Creep by Radiohead on repeat. <laughs> After some time, the kids from the community start filing into the dance hall. Some of them seem to notice our sign hack, but they don't seem to care. Most of the kid, kids group off into tiny clusters, standing in circles and casting sideways glances at the other groups of teens. Man, I do not miss being a teenager at social functions. This is true. I absolutely do not miss that. It was awful. Hey, hey, party people! Everyone in the room turns their attention to the DJ. Spin DJ Spin Master Quinn coming at you with a sound that people want. We're off to a good start. This next tune goes out to all the ladies in the audience. Ladies, let me hear you say, yeah. A few half-hearted yeahs echo throughout the crowd. All right. Oh, right. He sighs again. I, uh, man, it's been a heavy couple of days. This next one's actually just for my wife, Sandra. I hope we can work things out, my little honeysuckle vine. Oh, no. <laughs> the DJ begins playing Creep by Radio. <laughs> when you were here before, couldn't look you in the eyes. You're just like an angel. Your skin makes me cry. <laughs> uh, Amanda sidles up to me, pizza in one hand and punch in the other. Thank God I enabled streamer safe mode, because if that thing actually played here. <laughs> Creep, huh? Bold choice for a youth group. Let's see where he goes with this. After the song finishes, he plays Creep again. Is the DJ crying? <laughs> if you watch the kids really closely, you can catch them cringe every time Tom York swears. There they go. Maybe we should do something about this. Joseph runs up to us. He's killing the vibe. They're listening to swears. Sad swears. Oh my god. Could you just... Just say fuck, Joseph. It's okay. It's okay. You're so fucking special. I wish I was special. We have to do something. You guys should try and give me a pep talk. Maybe work him up to Everybody Hurts by R.E.M.? Or at the very least, No Rain by Blind Melon. You want to help us cheer him up? Uh, actually, I just saw my friend, uh, F Frederick. F Fred, Frederico. Frederico? He's from Latin. I didn't know you were taking a Latin class. I'm not. So he's from the country Latin? Yes, it exists. Don't Google it. 
You can go, Amanda. It's fine. And she's gone. Joseph and I make our way to the DJ booth where Spin Master Quinn is having a quiet cry. Jesus Christ. Ugh. Oh, I guess people want me to sing. I might do a little bit. Let's see. If I, if I remember the damn song. This thing is out of tune. A little bit. Now, I, I used to be able to pr play Creep, but I've forgotten all the chords, so that'll have to be some other day. Maybe I'll do a cover and upload it to the vlog channel for you. <laughs> hey, bud. Hey, 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 my dudes. How's the party jamming? It's, uh, not. Hey. Oh, I'm sorry, fellas. Just taking a moment to find my groove. That's the good stuff. Gotta play the satunes to properly appreciate the bangers, right? <laughs> play the booty bumpers. It's what Jesus would have wanted. I want to say that so bad. I want to say that so badly. But we can't. Because we have to be good Christian boys. Ah. Now, stop me if I'm out of line here, since I've never been a DJ and don't have any prop current plans to become one. But I don't think that's how it works. The kids came out here to have a good time. You gotta cool it on the sadness. Hey, buddy. If it's problems you're having with... Joseph leans in close to me. What was his wife's name again? Sandra? If you're having problems with Sandra, I can help you too. I do counseling. It's my job here, and I'm very good at it. Except, of course, your own marriage is in shambles. Shambles, Joseph! Hey. Oh, I don't know. I can tell that you're hurting. No one voluntarily listens to that much Radiohead on repeat unless they're going through some tough times. Trust me, I know. Joseph places a hand on Spin Master Quinn's shoulder, who immediately collapses into Joseph's embrace, crying quietly, Party time! <laughs> there, there, bud. It's gonna be okay. Th thank you. I I'll put on some dancehall anthems. You're the best, Spin Master Quinn. With yet another crisis averted, Joseph and I return to the dance floor where Amanda is, wait where Amanda is waiting with an ice cream cone. They have ice cream here. Good work, Amanda. How's it looking out there? Well, for dance, there's not a whole lot of dancing. Looks like people are starting to bail, though. This is a disaster. Don't be so hard on yourself. This ice cream, top notch. I'm sorry for dragging you into this sky, and you and Amanda should just go home. I'm not going to make you stay here for this train wreck. Oh, but train wrecks are fun. You get to see corpses and stuff. <laughs> it's not a disaster. We can still fix this. We can, uh... I suddenly realize what we have to do. Amanda, get out of here. I don't think you're gonna want to be here for this. Or be seen with me after this. Oh god, you're not going to... I throw my car keys to Amanda. I'll get a ride back with Joseph. Just remember me as I am right now. Not as what I am about to become. Huh? Amanda nods. Nice knowing you, pops. She runs out the door. Joseph, I'm gonna turn it up on the dance floor. With luck, we can get these youths into it as well. Are you in or out? Joseph stares at me. He knows what has to be done as much as I do. See you on the other side? See you on the other side. Please don't make me play a dancing minigame. Joseph and I walk out into the dance floor in the middle of the room. The youths all stare at us, unsure of what we're doing. Time to get our groove on. Let's start them off easy and work our way up to the more technical stuff. No. No. No, 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 no. Oh, Lord. I'm cringing inside. All of my insides are cringe. Okay. I don't know any of these dance moves except the worm, so let's... Lawnmower, I guess, is simple? All right, let's rip this baby. I start lawnmowing the dance floor. Oh, no. Huh. Joseph seems to respond and decides to mow another patch of grass on the dance floor. That's the stuff. I look around. Well, it looks like we've got everyone's attention. All right, Sky, let's turn up the heat. Running man? <laughs> Since time immemorial, this move has never let me down. I start jogging in place, matching movements with my arms pushing out. This seems to awaken something in Joseph, who feels the fire, the, or the running man, deep within him. I look around to the youths. They're getting into it. Keep it up, I think they're coming around. 
Yes, hammer slide. Absolutely always hammer slide. <laughs> I tried to do the hammer slide. Honestly, it's not a bad bit, but the kids don't get too into it because they are heathens. They are heathens and philistines and uncultured. Oh. Good effort, buddy, but I think that pan flashed a little too long ago. They're not looking too lively yet, but we can still turn it around. We will not attempt twerking. Moonwalk. I start sliding my feet backwards. I can't tell if this looks good or not, but I think these kids have seen enough people doing moonwalks. They, they understand the general concept. <laughs> Joseph makes a moonwalk attempt as well. Surprisingly, dude pulls it off flawlessly. I look around to the youths. They're cheering. All right, time for the big finish. Yeah, no death drops. That's a bad idea. I am very tempted to do this. Because an unrehearsed backflip is a certain way to get to the emergency room. I approach Joseph in motion that I'm about to lift him up. Or are you strong enough to do that? I don't know! <laughs> Without regard for human safety, I summon all of my might and lift Joseph across above my head. It isn't quite dirty dancing, but Joseph is a good sport and spreads his arms while I spin him in a circle. I look at the crowd. They seem to love it. The kids swarm the dance floor. They're all laughing and dancing to the music. Looks like our job here is done. Somewhat obligingly, the kids take the dance floor and start to move around. Before long, they're starting to laugh and enjoy themselves. It was dicey, but we've done our jobs. Yes. Come on, the rest of the chaperones will take it from here. What? Oh. I have something to show you. Joseph leads me out of the main room and down various darkened corridors of the church. I can barely see anything and find myself tripping over my own feet. This is when he kills me. This is when he pulls out the knife and says, For the blood god! <laughs> Joseph, I think I lost you. His hand finds mine in the darkness. I'm right here. I'm glad he can't see me blush. We keep walking. Where are we? Are we? This church is huge. We're almost there. I actually have to admit that I was a little dishonest with you. I didn't invite you out here just to help me chaperone. What happened to lying being one of the ten things you're not supposed to do? I think there's an exception for when you're trying to surprise a friend. Joseph closes the door behind us. I guess we're in a random room in the depths of the church now. What could he possibly have planned? Murder! Murder and blood rituals! That's what he's got planned! Why aren't you running? There's so many red flags! So, last time we talked about escaping to an island where we could e live out an easy tropical lifestyle where our only worry is trying to find that lost shaker of salt. And that is why I will sacrifice you to <laughs> to corn so that he will grant my wishes and turn me into an avatar. Okay, I know he's not going to do that, but still. Black void smiling dude with like a creepy grin. Since we can't actually do that, I figured I could bring a little bit of the tropics to Maple Bay. It's not quite Margaritaville, but something like it. Joseph throws on the lights. Yeah, yeah, okay, fine. Welcome to the Margarita Zone. I look around as my eyes adjust to the light. It's his office, but there are twinkle lights strung across the walls, little garlands of fake flowers, and two beach chairs set up in front of the desk. There's a blender and two glasses sitting on the table. Ukulele music plays softly in the background. Joseph, this is... This is amazing. Yeah. There's no pop tops to step on here, buddy. You did this for me? Joseph takes a seat and gestures for me to do the same. Oh. I did this for us. I think we've both earned it. Okay. I settle in while Joseph pours us both margaritas. You really went all out. I have a flair for the dramatic, and you can't lead the community if you don't know how to make a good margarita. I take a sip of mine. This is a killer margarita. I would follow this man. You think the dance is gonna go okay without our sick dance moves? N no, not here. You're missing the point of Margarita Zone. Margarita Zone is a place of rest and relaxation. It's a place where you can kick your feet up and forget about your worries for a while. Uh. I think that's Cheeseburger in Paradise. Yeah, well, I don't know, Jimmy Buffett! What the hell was I supposed to do? <laughs> I'm just now realized that I only know two Jimmy Buffett songs. I don't, I know like one. And that's like, if you like pina coladas and getting caught in the rain. And that's all I know of that song. I'm going to have to revoke your dad card for that one. Joseph gestures to the makeshift island bar he's made. You know, it's funny. This reminds me so, so much of when I was younger. I've been meaning to ask, what did you do before you started preaching? It's uninteresting. I left home young and got into a lot of trouble. What kind of trouble? Well, trouble meant I got to go wherever I wanted, whenever I wanted. I hitchhiked around the country, went on adventures, went, met all kinds of people. Uh, did some stuff I'm not too proud of. 
But I was young and in love and didn't have to answer to anybody. Hmm. Now, well, I host fundraisers at car washes and take the kids to soccer practice on the weekends. <sighs> Sorry, I don't mean to get heavy here. It's okay. Seems like you spend a lot of time taking care of others, but not enough time taking care of yourself. If you need to talk about it, I'm here for you. Joseph stares deeply into the blender filled with ice and margarita mix. Oh. Yeah, it's just, I think about Margaritaville a lot, or I guess the concept of it. A place where I could just strum on my six string while I wait for the shrimp to boil, drink margaritas all the time. Forget my worries. It's an easy life. I had Margaritaville once. But I think the closest I'm ever going to get back to it is Margarita Zone. A short and occasional reprieve from my daily life. Good lord, man! Get some counseling! <laughs> is that such a bad thing? This is pretty nice. It doesn't last forever, that's the rub. When you're in Margarita Zone, it's not like your problems have really gone away. You're just choosing to ignore them. Maybe you're looking at it the wrong way. Maybe Margarita Zone is actually better than Margaritaville, because Margarita Will is basically an impossible idea. Remember what Spin Master Quinn said? Sometimes you have to play the sad tunes to appreciate the bangers. If stepping on a pop top is your biggest concern, how could you possibly appreciate the boiling shrimp? Oh. Hmm. And Margarita Zone isn't landlocked to this office. I think it's about finding little pieces of Margarita Zone throughout your day and taking joy in those moments. Well, that's awfully optimistic of you. Yeah, it doesn't have to be anything big. For me, I think it's being able to quietly do work jumbles and drink some strong coffee in the morning. See my daughter smile, or... I smile at Joseph. Spend some quality time with a good friend. Yeah? Yeah. I can feel myself leaning closer to Joseph. Is it just me, or... Is he leaning closer to... Well, that was fast! <laughs> Joseph tenses up. He downs the rest of his margarita and hops out of his chair. Uh, it's getting late. We should head back. Sure. Joseph and I make sure the dance wraps up without incident before he takes me back to the cul-de-sac. I hop out of Joseph's car before he pulls into his own driveway. Uh, thanks again for the help. Thanks for the margarita zone. Oh. Maybe we'll go back there one day. If we do, it'll be my own damn fault. Joseph chuckles and drives away. Uh. Again, this is a Jimmy Buffett reference with which I am not familiar. <laughs> I walk into my living room to find Amanda curled up under a blanket and groaning on the couch. Hey, Panda. You feeling okay? Uh. Dad, I have a tummy ache. Eat too much youth group food? Uh. I drank too deeply from the well of life, and now I pay the price. Uh. And by well of life, I mean that big lukewarm punch bowl of seltzer juice and sherbet. Sherbet. <laughs> Amanda slides to the floor with an elongated groan. Need anything, kiddo? A time machine that goes back approximately two hours into the past where I could warn myself of the folly of excess. I'll pour you a glass of water. Love you, pops. How'd the dance go? Oh, I crushed it. Got the kids on the dance floor at the expense of my dignity. A fair trade. Also, everything hurts. I'll see you in the morning, kiddo. Night, Dad. <laughs> No, it wasn't. It was terrible. <laughs> uh. Another dreary night, another listless stroll through Maple Bay. I've really been bonding the with the community at Kim Jim and Kim's lately, so my strolls have been leading me there more and more often. Peter the man from the bank, Keith down from down the street, Evelyn who I saw at the deli that one time, and guy whose name I think is Carl are basically members of the family at this point. In fact, I hear Neil, the surly bartender, mention that tonight is Keith from down the street's birthday and that he'd have to get that ba little baby a little cake for his special little day. I think he was probably just being a dick, but I head into the bar anyway. The mere possibility of cake is strong enough to lure me in. I step inside just in time to see Neil washing a cake tray with a crime scene outlink of outline of pink icing on it. Huh. I guess it really was Keith from down the street's birthday. And I missed it. I sit down and order a beer. As I sit down at the bar, I notice Mary from next door sitting in the corner of the room drinking alone again. She must be having a rough day. She seems so weary and so sad. She's been doing this more and more often lately. A pang of guilt shoots through me. Does she know? Is this because of me? Am I a home wrecker? <clears throat> Let's say hi, because that's a great idea that's not going to go wrong. I decide to say hello. I walk over to her booth. She doesn't look up. 
this seat taken? She still doesn't look up. I take a seat anyways, and she finally notices me. You. Okay, this was maybe not the best idea. Yeah, I know, that's why we chose it. Hi, hi, hey. Hey. Having fun with your new best friend, Joseph? Uh, he's a great... I'm so glad, I'm so happy for you two. Mary, I'm not... Huh? I'd never accuse you of anything on Kuthskine. You're just having an innocent, very platonic time with my husband. A supportive friendship. Uh. You're a good friend, aren't you? Uh, let's not go with that one. Let's just say just a friend, because let's not do something stupid here. That's funny. Joseph usually likes his friends to at least have a spine. Come on. We can't all be as blunt as you are, Mary. Is you're an expert on my marriage now? It doesn't take an expert to see that you two are miserable. Then what does that make you? We were miserable a long time before you started poking into our business, buddy boy. Don't come around thinking you're some paragon of empathy just because you got involved where you weren't welcome. Mary takes a long sip of her drink. This is a mistake. Really? Was it? I, don't, I didn't notice that. You know, you're really not his type. I'm surprised. Mm. Mary pays her tab and strides right out of Jim and Kim's without looking back. Welcome. You've got yeah, this is going to end really badly. <laughs> oh, there's just no good option. Anyway, we have saved. And now it is time to pull the trigger on this disaster. This is a very bad idea. I really want to see Joseph again, but after that weird encounter with Mary... I don't know. He's my friend, right? I should be able to hang out with him and not be weird, right? Yeah, sure, that's what's going on here. Right? The computer pings as a message flies to my in into my inbox. It's Joseph. Hi, Skye, we should hang out. Like, actually hang out. No manual labor, no impromptu therapy sessions with a sad DJ, no kids, just you, me, and the open ocean. Wait, how are we gonna get in the open ocean? How are we gonna get in the open ocean, you might ask? Good question. Oh, prescient. If you're interested, I'll meet you down by the marina and you can check out the goods, if you know what I mean. I mean my yacht. Let me know. Joseph owns a yacht? Of course he does! Have you not seen the way he dresses? Joseph owns a yacht? Yes. I'm as surprised as you are. Oh. You've been holding out on me. Your only daughter who you love. What, did you think that having me as a father would somehow afford you the fringe benefit of getting to go on a yacht? Hmm. What else did it get me? A healthy upbringing in a supportive environment? Yeah, okay, but what if I had that exact same upbringing in a healthy environment, but also I could go on a yacht sometimes? Relax, kiddo. Joseph is inviting me onto his yacht. It's gonna be a yacht of fun. Aww. A yacht of fun, goddammit. <laughs> I'm glad you're excited, but doesn't... But that doesn't mean you get to start throwing out puns. Why yacht, Amanda? God damn it. Well, I gotta go get ready. To go on my friend's yacht. I start to walk away, but Amanda stops me. Hey, in all seriousness, I hope you have fun. But make good choices, okay? But Dad! Don't stay out too late and you can't go to Jennifer Longfall's birthday party next weekend. She promised me that she would propose to me, but ended up going with Logan Crutchfield. I'm not going anywhere near that party. Good bed, Dad. Good bed. <laughs> I respond back to Joseph, letting him know I'll be there. Time to make some awful life decisions! <laughs> a quaint marina complete with local mom and pop shops and a small diner frame the bay. I've gone for a few walks by the bayside to stare enviously at all the nice boats before. Joseph should be around here somewhere. Gosh, this is fancy. I feel a little out of place. Sky in. That doesn't sound like Joseph. Okay, I did the wrong voice. I turn around to find... Robert. Robert, hey! What's he doing here? So, how's Joseph? Robert comes off cold immediately. I get the feeling he's not happy I'm here. And what's with that look? He seems very angry. Very, very angry. He's going through some stuff. Mm. Robert blasts through a cigarette. So I guess he's your friend now, huh? Your pal? Oh, he's... Robert, you're my friend too. 
And I suppose two friends just spend the night out on a private yacht together, being buds, chatting about friendship. Is that what two friends do? His voice is getting louder. What has gotten into him? Robert, come on, you know I'm not like that. Excuse me? Skyn, you might be an idiot, but I'm not. What's your problem with Joseph anyway? I don't like Joseph. I don't trust Joseph. Joseph is a bad guy, and I don't want him around you. Robert, you committed petty larceny last week and think you've been haunted by the Dover ghost. It was a goddamn Dover ghost. Robert pauses to calm himself down. Joseph's not who you think he is. Oh, really? Really? I had not seen any signs that there might be something nefarious about the man at all. I, I did not see that coming at all. <laughs> what? Ask him about it sometime. Bring it up. And watch your back when you do. Because a guy like that will put a knife right in it. Robert flicks a cigarette into the front seat of a reasonably keeled, clean schooner before turning around to leave. He takes a step, hesitates, then turns back to face me. You're both awful. You deserve each other. I'll tell Mary you said hi. Oh, jeez, ow! With that, Robert storms off down the pier. Well, okay. I wander deeper into the marina. All of these boats are really, really nice. I wonder which one is Joseph's. Do, uh, do you not... How many red flags, my character, is it going to take before you have a second thought? <laughs> uh. Oh, okay, this is because you had two dates with him. This is not in a game where you don't date Robert previously. Oh, well, that makes sense. Hey, Skyen. Joseph? Where are you? Up here. I look up. Joseph waves to me from atop a huge yacht. Why does he have- well, of course he has a huge yacht. Of course he does. I've never been on a yacht before. You never forget your first. I glance at the name on the side of the boat. The St. Peter, huh? Inherited this thing from my pops. Real fire and blimstone typed. Loves, loved yachts. So what's the plan? What's the plan, Captain? I figured since the last time we went a bit sideways, we could cast a lot out on the open sea, wrestle with Neptune, and set sails on the seas of adventure. You're kind of a goofball when you're not wrangling your kids, you know that? Joseph smiles and winks from his perch. I have no idea what you're talking about. Joseph hops down and extends a hand to me, helping me up onto the yacht. I'm thrown off by how soft his hands are. Does he moisturize or what? Oh my god, please, main character, would you stop it? Sky and stop thinking about his hands. Yes, please do that. Pure thoughts. You're gonna be in a boat alone with Joseph on the open ocean. It's a yacht. He's married. It's fine. This is fine. It's fine. Totally fine. After undoing the mooring and climbing onto his captain's seat, Joseph slowly takes the boat out, ringing the big steel bell with extra emphasis, even though nobody else seems to be around. <laughs> Shoving off, boat launching, man and boat launching as one. The St. Peter navigates out of the marina and into the open water, with Joseph doing occasional steering flourish as the boat bobs along with the waves. He seems a lot more relaxed out here. Joseph is definitely in his element. <laughs> this is the part where we wrestle Neptune, so please remove your shirt and roll in some talcum powder. <laughs> Luckily, I brought my Neptuning fork. <laughs> it's a pun. Oh, this is very bad. <laughs> Collegiate level dad joking there, Skyen. For a while, we watch as the trees and waves pass us by. Where are we going? Oh. A little further out. It's a lot quieter once we get out on open water. Plus, we could see whales. Whales are cool. I don't trust whales. Nothing should be that big. Yeah. Mm, noted. Joseph maneuvers the boat past some buoys. Or boys, depending on whether you're British or American. He sighs. Uh. I wish I could get out more often, but you know. Family, wife, saving souls. Yeah. So many souls, I can barely hold them all. I watch Joseph work the boat. Despite his age, he doesn't look like he's slowed down at all. And from here, I can see how toned his muscles are. Stop it! Impure thoughts! <laughs> I stare out there at the ocean. Joseph's right. It's a lot quieter out here, but... Something about that conversation with Robert still bothers me. Oh, really? Really? Something about that conversation bothered you, did it? It, it got to you a little bit? Maybe you think, oh, there's something going on here. Maybe I should ask him about it. So, I ran into Robert? Yeah. <laughs> Was he... He wasn't waiting for you at the dock, was he? Yeah, and smoking like a chimney. <laughs> well, that's Robert, all right. Is everything okay between you two? He seemed... angry. Oh. It's... 
Mm, how do I put this? Mm. Did Robert ever proposition you for, um, escapades? Actually, he did. Uh, and did you take him up on that? No. Yeah. Ah, well, oh. that is where we differ. Oh, okay, right, yeah, okay, fine, I see. Yeah, okay. Saw that coming a little bit, but still. God damn it, Joseph. What? Yeah. I know, I know. Father of four, family man, married, for Christ's sakes. I should never have even... But I was in a bad place, and with Mary constantly out, I... Yeah. Joseph settles himself before continuing. This definitely gets under his skin. Yeah. yeah. I made a hasty decision. One which Robert does not exactly, uh... He has a weird thing about casual, um... But he asked you. You'd have to ask Robert about the weird Robert politics of that. He's been weird about it ever since. Oh, gee, I wonder why. I wonder why. His wife... Your wife is his goddamn best friend, you jackass. <laughs> uh, huh. Hey. But it's over, right? Mm. Oh, yes, absolutely. That began and ended on the same day. Well, okay then. So you're not upset? I'm not. Things happen, Joseph, and I... Th you No! He <laughs> no! No, 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 no. We're not... We're not fine with this. This is very bad. You should... I Okay, this is where my main character is completely disconnected from me because like, I would just have been like, no, you fucking fucked up, my man. You screwed the entire pooch several ways from Sunday and you need to fix it. Yeah, jackass. But okay, then. I guess we're going with this. I think you of all people deserve a little forgiveness. All right, sure. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you, Sky. That means more than you'll ever know. Joseph and I boat in silence as the bay gets smaller and smaller behind us. I decide to take a peek over the edge of the ship. The wake this thing kicks off is intense. I wonder if Joseph would ever let me water ski off his yacht. Hey, dolphins! Joseph, they're dolphins! Oh, so you're scared of whales, but not dolphins? I feel like there's an unspoken truth between man and dolphin. I would be more than comfortable riding a dolphin into battle. Dolphins are way more dangerous. They sometimes drown their babies for fun, you know. Can I trust nothing on the open ocean? I like to think that I'm pretty cool. No, you're not, Joseph! <laughs> Did you not? You the thing we just talked about. Okay, fine. All right, Joseph, it's you and me versus the entirety of marine life. Hmm. <laughs> I yell out to the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> My life goal is to punch as many fish as I can before I die. I had lost the last week and I can't wait to eat more of you. Yeah. You tell him, Skyen. Oh. Of course he reacts to the lobster line. Uh -huh. And here we are. Skyen, welcome to the ocean. I look out into the vast expanse of blueness. Yep, that's the ocean. I'm suddenly struck with an overwhelming sense of claustrophobia despite being in a wide open space. I'm on a boat with a handsome man. A handsome married man. And there are whales beneath us. Nothing should be that big. It's a little daunting, isn't it? Do you trust the whales? Oh. oh, you know there are more dangerous things in the oceans than whales, right? Oh, yeah. Like tuna. The tuna is an apex predator. What about sharks? Oh, oh sharks are tight. It's the tuna you gotta watch out for. And the whales. Hey, wanna look out wistfully over the sea with me? Joseph and I head to the bow of the ship to do some quiet contemplation. You know, I... Shh. Quiet contemplation. Oh. I'm alone with my thoughts. Cool, great, that's awesome. Yeah. I look out to the sea for a bit, then over to Joseph. He looks so commanding as he surveys the ocean. Feels like he's really at home on the water. What Mary said to me at the bar. I can't stop thinking about it. Is she right? But she's terrible to him. He's unhappy. He deserves... No! Stop that! Stop that! You stop that right now, young man! Your daughter literally told you to make good decisions. This is a terrible one. I don't know what to think about this, but I just feel so... Drawn to Joseph. No, yeah, well, okay, that's your problem, not mine. I should say something. So, uh, about Mary. Joseph continues to stare off into the distance. It's, um, well, if you really want to know. So suddenly you hear a sputter coming from the engine room. Joseph runs over to the boat's controls and taps on some dials. I guess we can talk about Mary later. Oh, okay, so. We might have a small problem. What small problem? Yeah. We are out of gas. 
the whales are going to get us. The whales siphoned our gas. It's okay. I can just call one of my boat buddies to come tow us back in. Joseph pulls out his phone. Just kidding. I can't do that because there's no service. I check my phone. I don't have service either. Should we just submit ourselves to the whales? Well, I do have an old radio in the office, but it's broken. Are you handy with tools? This is how we die. I'm a dad. If the radio is anything like frantically putting together a bike on Christmas Eve, it should be no problem. Hmm. Let's take a look at it and see what we can figure out. Joseph directs me towards the radio and showcases its insides. Eh. I don't know how radios work. I think there's just some frayed wires in here. If we can reattach them, we should have a working radio in no time. We stare into the interior of the radio. I'm not entirely sure what I'm looking at. I don't think Joseph knows either. Uh, you know what? Let's just throw some stuff around in there and see what works. MacGyver, that radio. In D Why is there a condom? What? No. Okay. What the heck is that? Is that a coconut? And gum? Okay, so I see some capacitors at least. So I just have to like drop stuff in. Okay, let me just... I think you're missing something. And oh shit, okay. <laughs> okay, I have no idea what I'm supposed to do here. Well, we could be here for a while. <laughs> See, cause... Okay, I... It, um, all right, fine. I mean, I don't know a lot about electronics, but I know none of that is how anything is supposed to work. The radio springs to life. Whoa, we did it. Joseph speaks into the receiver. Hello? Hello, can anyone hear me? He tries a few other channels. Nobody responds. Uh, we might be a little far out. I don't think there's anyone in range. How big's the range? Well, this radio came with a boat with my dad bought it in the 60s, so uh, not great. That's reassuring. Now what? Well, there's worse places to be stuck on, a, stuck on than a yacht. Wine? <laughs> Wine. Wine! WINE! I keep a couple emergency bottles below deck. Wanna go grab some while I fiddle with the radio some more? Yeah, this is de- oh my god. Okay, this is definitely not gonna turn out terribly at all. Let's see, wine, wine. It's gotta be around here somewhere. It's a sturdy cabinet, a little dusty, but I bet there's some treasures in here. Hey, it's wine! A whole drawer full of wine. It's a Yacht Club miracle. Toilet Rouge, huh? Come to daddy. Now I just need to find some glasses. It's a sturdy cabinet, a little, yeah, blah, 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 blah. Look, you can tell a lot about a man by how seriously he takes his fire safety. Nice, Joseph. Nice. Oh, wait, hang on. I forgot to put that up. <clears throat> It's a sturdy cabinet, blah, 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 blah. Salmon flashlights. Well, this is a solution to a different problem. Maybe if we're stranded out here for days and run out of electricity, we'll need these, but the chief concern right now is wine intake. For an old yacht, this lounge is pretty high class. Wood panels on everything, leather couches. It's like an old Playboy photo shoot in here. Oh, a California king, swanky. It's unmade and a little messy. Less swanky. There are some clothes strewn about uh, uh, on the floor by the bed. Socks, slacks, yep, a pink polo shirt. 
Well, I guess now I know if Joseph prefers boxers or briefs. This seems lived in. Yeah, because he's living on the damn yacht. He's living on it because Mary kicked him out of the house. That's what's going on. Ah, here are some wine glasses. These are perfect vessels for the Twilight Rouge. Finally, time to get back to Joseph. Take a look at everything on the shelf. Examine photos. There's a few photos on the wall here. Looks like a picture from Joseph and Mary's wedding day. Nice grandpa glasses. Looking real shit slick there, Joe. Another picture of Mary and Joseph on this very yacht. Quality 90s fashion right here. Mary still has her patented stink face, but at least Joseph seems happy on the water. Hey, it's all the dads. Looks like it's from a couple of years ago. The gang's all here. Brian, Matt, Hugo, Craig, Damien, Robert. Wow. Robert's actually smiling and wearing a sweater. That's... I know that sweater. And there's one guy on the end that I don't recognize. Hugo's ex, maybe? And hey, here's Joseph go-karting with the kids. That's fun. Gee, I wonder which sweater it was that Robert was wearing. I cannot imagine what sweater it was or why he was wearing it. Oh, Lord. I take a look at everything on the shelf. Seven books. Looks like a bunch of different Bibles huh, on brand. A couple of old vet magazines. I guess those must be Mary's. Wait a minute. Is this... Well, well. Now the hot body shoe is on the other hot body foot. I take a look at everything on the shelf. <laughs> Seven knickknacks. If there's one thing Joseph does right, it's the odd stuff he puts on shelves. I take a moment to closely examine what I think is an old submarine clock. Ah, and there's the crosses again. Boy knows his crosses. Really cool design, too. Oh, Joseph, you dumbass. <clears throat> I bring the wine and glasses up to the deck to find Joseph still hunched over the radio. Skyen, wine! Good to see you two, just in time for the sunset. I didn't take you for a drinker. <laughs> Haven't you heard? I'm a cool minister. How cool? <laughs> I can land half of my kickflips. What is that, like, four? Right. Five on the good day. Poor me. Regular poor. <laughs> Now, this is how you do stranded at sea. We clank our glasses and drink up. This wine's not bad. There's a hint of, uh, am I tasting grapes? You have a discerning palate. It might be grapes. Yeah, it, it might be grapes, wine. Wine might have it. Joseph and I lounge on the deck with our yacht wine, taking in the ocean air. The sun starts to dip below the horizon. We could be stranded out here forever. I can't think of anyone else I'd want to be stranded with. It's just you, me, and all those whales. So many whales. You're killing the vibe. Revive the vibe, Sky. Generally, it takes three days and a gigantic stone door rolled in front of a tomb, but I think we can save it. Um... Oh. I bet we'll have a whale of time. Back to whales, huh? I'm trying to alleviate my fear of whales by making joke about them because I don't have any healthier coping mechanisms. Oh, cheers to that. <laughs> Oh, fuel prices are on the rise. Yearly maintenance is a bit of a strain on the finances. Can't really take it out in the winter months. Oh. But also sometimes you can have a party on your yacht and everyone thinks you're cool. So, it evens out. Oh. Sky, if you had a yacht, what would you name it? Clickety clickety emails. Good lord. Oh, <laughs> no! No! No, 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 no. Fuck you, whales. I'm keeping on brand here. Eh, riding it on the side of the boat like that is basically asking them to attack. Well, that's the goal. I'd be ready. You know where to find me, you cowards. <laughs> I go to take another sip of wine, but stop myself. Is wine an acceptable beverage in Margarita Zone? Oh, well, that it is, Skyn. All beverages of leisure are welcome in the Margarita Zone. This is almost what we wanted, right? <laughs> huh, no responsibilities, no worries. Other than possibly dying out here. And the whales. But yeah, I'd say we're in the zone. Joseph and I clink our wine glasses again. To the margarita zone! Nice. Wasted away again. If you have any salt shakers, we can arrange them into a pentagram to summon Jimmy Buffett. Maybe he can save us. Oh. As a youth minister, I make packs with neither the devil nor island jammers. If we were to get off this boat, he'll be by the grace of God. Or Steely Dan. Uh. <laughs> Amen. Our laughter dies down. We're both silent for a moment, looking into each other's eyes. This is getting so dumb and bad. Joseph leans in closer. I feel myself doing this. You should really stop doing that. This is a bad idea. Yeah, it is. It's a very bad idea. 
I can't help but feel like doing this will only end up hurting someone else. Yeah, so stop. But his face is- No! Right. Sky, I have to tell you something. Mary and I are done. I pull back. I think about the clothes strewn about the lounge, the undone bed. Are you... living on this boat? Yeah, yeah he is. I, I didn't want to mention it, but... He sighs, strolling back to the controls of the boat. I lean on the console next to him. We had a very long talk, and it's unsalvageable. I'm staying here until everything's sorted out. Oh, I'm so sorry. If there's anything I can do, I'm fine. I'm, I'm fine, actually. It was a long time coming. For the first time in a long time, I'm seeing a path to happiness. And now I can focus on myself and stop trying to deny the things that make me happy. I need someone who will be there. Someone kind and honest. No! No, 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 no. Like, there's one thing to, like, be, like, help him cheat. The other thing is to be his goddamn rebound fuck. That's a terrible idea. Oh, my God. It's not like I have a million years of dating experience, but even I can see that this is a terrible idea. <laughs> and you deserve that, Joseph. You really do. No, you don't. Anyway, I've been having this crazy feeling there's someone I could get in the habit of having around. Someone very close to here. No. Is it... Wales? Oh. I mean you. Oh. oh. I was trying to be subtle. I think I'm picking up what Joseph's putting down. I lean forward, closing the gap between us when... Joseph grabs the receiver. Come in, come in, is anyone there? Uh... Uh, no? Over? We're stranded out in open waters. We've been out here for hours. Please send help, over. But wait, are you guys gonna kiss? <laughs> I mean, what are your coordinates? Over! Skyen, have you been leaning on the talk button this whole time? I look down. Oh, oh, I definitely have been leaning on the talk button. Betrayed by my own butt yet again. I didn't lean on it, you leaned on it. No, neither of you were leaning on the talk button. We didn't hear anything, over. <laughs> hey. Were you listening to us? Sir, we heard the Coast Guard are professionals. We're not doing that. But as professionals, it seems like you deserve happiness, and we think it's closer than you think. Um, over. <laughs> How soon could you guys be here to give us a tow? Over. Well, um, we'll pick you up in the morning. Sounds like you two have some stuff to hash out. Over and out. Wait. Silence. Nobody returns our radio calls. I think they left. We stare at each other for a second. Oh. Well, Joseph carefully places the receiver on the table, making sure the talk button isn't pressed in. Well, okay. Well, okay. I guess that's where we're going now. There's no way around it. This is a terrible idea. Joseph grabs me by the shirt and pulls me into a kiss. His lips are soft and sweet from the wine, and his skin is still warm from the sun. I reach for his belt and pull him even closer, running my free hand under his shirt and up his side. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure you do, you moron. You idiot. You fool. He pushes me against the boat's console, kissing down my neck. Come on. His hands drift to my thighs, and he effortlessly picks me up. That's pretty impressive. Wow. Joseph carries me below deck. I'd be lying if I said I hadn't fantasized about this, but I didn't think he'd be so aggressive. I've wanted this for so long. He throws me onto the bed. I let out a little yelp. Lots of time to kill Skyne. We'd better get started. Ah, no. Oh, this is such a bad idea. Oh, man. I might have overdone it on the wine last night. Just a few more minutes of sleep will do just fine. Wait. I open my eyes to find Joseph's face a few inches from mine, an arm slung around my waist. He's sleeping peacefully. His hair is mussed and his lips are still a little red. I think this is what I was talking about when we were discussing Margarita Zone. Finding perfect little moments of joy, like the way the light falls across Joseph's face, or how he's still holding me tight even in his sleep. I'm very tempted to curl up closer to him and keep sleeping, but I know the Coast Guard will probably be here soon, and I'd like to be wearing clothes when that happens. You moron! You profound idiot! I nudge Joseph. It takes a couple of shakes before he blearily opens his eyes. When he notices me hovering over him, he breaks into a huge grin. We should get dressed. Joseph pulls me in for a kiss. Do we have to? Another kiss. Stop trying to tempt me! Fine, fine. Yeah. The Coast Guard eventually shows up and tows us back to the bay. They thankfully keep their comments to themselves. Joseph and I step off the yard. Uh, 
missing a word there. Step off the yacht and he walks me to my car. I had a great time. Me too. No thanks to the whales. Shh, shh, shh. You're in land now. They can't hurt you here. Take care, Joseph. You too. He gives me one last kiss of, on the lips before he turns around and walks back to his boat. <laughs> it's my it's, uh, this is gonna be so bad. Well, I've been gone an entire day. Hopefully Amanda's all right. Amanda, um, Dad! She runs up and hugs me. I was genuinely concerned about your well-being, but upon closer inspection, you seem to be okay? What happened? The yacht ran out of gas and we got stuck. But it was okay, because I was on a yacht. Weren't you scared? Your father feels no fear. Were you able to take care of yourself for the night? Yeah, I just did a ton of drugs, vandalized a few cars, and then embezzled some funds from my school. All in all, pretty low-key night. Where'd you learn that from? I learned it from you, Dad. Well, if you did, you would have funneled those funds through a legitimate cash and carry business, fudging the books over the course of years so you don't arouse any suspicion from the feds. Rookie mistake, Panda. I'm glad you're back in one piece. Did you make good choices? No! Yeah, no! <laughs> I think I did. No! But hey, I'm starving. Want to make sandwiches out of whatever we can find in the fridge? More than anything, Pops. E Everything about this is a bad idea. <laughs> Completely terrible. Oh, Lord. Hey, let's do that again sometime. Yeah, B, I hope so. God damn it. The game wanted me to flirt with him so badly, so badly, and I was just desperately pushing against it, like, no, we're not doing this, no! <laughs> okay. Oh no, Mary's here. With everything that's happened between me and Joseph, I should be a good host and say hi to her. No, you, sh you should- no. Oh lord. But I don't wanna- yeah! No shit, dumbass! Come on, Skyne, you can do this- yeah! I walk up to Mary. Hey. Hey. You been... good? Just peachy. I have to go over there now. That went about as well as I could have expected it to. Skyen! Brian, you made it! Ah, uh, oh, don't pass. Okay, that's <laughs> stuff we've already seen before. Hey. Oh. Mm. Ah. Oh. Hey. No, he wasn't overtly pissed at me. <laughs> The sun is setting and everyone seems to have eaten their fill. As the party starts to wind down, I take a seat next to Joseph. Joseph, it's so good to see you again. Great party. I should have you organize our next youth group mixer. My dance skills are ready whenever you need them. Hey, if you aren't busy this weekend, I was thinking we'd make a catch a movie or something. Yeah, that would be fun. Or we could take you the yacht out again. Yo Joseph sidles up against me and presses a kiss against my neck. Wait, this feels weird. So, uh, I guess things are still friendly with Mary? Uh, yeah, we're actually, uh, we're actually staying together. Yeah! Yeah! Jay! Who could have seen that coming? Who could have known that would be coming? Who would have, of course this was gonna go wrong! God damn it! Joseph, you profound jackass! <laughs> what? Why? For a lot of reasons. There's the kids, for one. And the fact that we have to be a pillar for this community. So many people look up to us as the model marriage, and I would hate to let my parishioners to fuck you! Fuck you! Fuck you, Joseph. Fuck you. Oh, what a line of crock of bullshit. Oh, no. No, 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 no. But that doesn't stop you and I from, you know. Yeah, 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 it really kind of does. It really kind of does, you jackass. I pull away from Joseph. That's not what I want. I know it's not perfect, and God, how I wish it were. If it were up to me, you and I would be sailing the seven seas in search of Margaritaville. It is up to you! It is literally up to you! You profound, unceasing piece of garbage, jackass, moron, idiot! 
I knew it the moment I saw your stupid pink shirt and your shitty blue sweater, you just cocky pants wearing Jezebel. But this is real life, and all we can do is find Margarita Zone wherever we can. I look down, too nervous to respond. I feel his hand on mine. I don't pull away. I'll leave you to think about it, but just know that you can reach out to me. Yeah. For anything. Yeah, oh gee, yeah, I'm sure you'll be fucking high fidelity to me. The same way that you were loyal to your wife and Robert. <laughs> Joseph gets up and walk, walks away. I don't know what to think. I do! I know what to think! Be mad! Get pissed, you idiot! Oh, just fucking burn his house down or something. The last guests begin to make their way out of the party. Amanda wanders over and sits down next to me. Kill a party, Pops. What can I say? I was inspired. So, uh, okay, no crying time. Nope. No crying time. Okay, Joseph can go fuck himself. He can go fuck himself forever. Forever. God, what a dickhead. <laughs> oh, Lord. He just wanted to get his dick wet. That's all he... He just wanted someone he could fuck on the side. That's what he wanted. He didn't want to give up his marriage. He didn't want to sacrifice anything for it. Nah, he just wanted to get laid. Without any consequences. No, 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 no. 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 Absolutely, freaking fucking literally not. Can we date Mary next? I want to date Mary. I want to fucking her and I go get drunk somewhere. We'll leave Joseph to burn. <laughs> <laughs> but I understand why this route is in here. I understand why it's there, and I understand the the role it has in the narrative because, again. As we talked about um, with some of the other routes is like the core of a lot of dating sims is wish fulfillment. It's about living out a fantasy of some kind. And not all fantasy is happy endings. Not all fantasy is you get the girl or the guy in this case and, you know, settle down and it's kisses and cupcakes ever after. Sometimes the fantasy is dark. Sometimes the fantasy is about difficult emotions and 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 tough moments and really really going through misery in a way that is safer than going through it in real life so i get i get why it's here and i can see why people would enjoy it like i had lots of fun with it like i had lots of fun just screaming at how much of a moron the character is <laughs> what a jackass joseph is lots of fun with it but oh boy oh god what a piece of garbage man that person is Will you try out the cult route? I do not know what that is, but it sounds amazing. But yes, no, Joseph can go fuck himself. He can just he can just go straight to hell forever and stay there. That's where he deserves to be. Didn't even get a pin up of him. <laughs> Which is good, because he doesn't deserve one. See, because technically now we should go back to this. Before the third date. But I kind of want to go back to even before that. Hang on, what are these save games? Got dads. He's at level 2 right now. I'm mostly just trying to figure out... Welcome. You've got dads. Then why did I save there? Welcome. You've got dads. Why do I have so many... That is weird. I mean, this one's the earliest one from today. Welcome. 
You've got dads. Okay, that is... Hmm. Interesting. Weird. Oh, well. <laughs> Welcome. You've got dads. Okay, the cult route is a finicky way to do it, but you could Jimmy Buffett the way into it, to which you, I can write the shortcut on Discord. Okay, we'll do that later. Um, maybe, because for the moment at least I want to move off. I want to move on from this jackass. What if I load this one, then where will I be? Welcome. You've got oh, that's that. way the hell back. Yeah, that's really far back. Why do I have all those saves? That is weird. Anyway, let's uh, play through. <laughs> Welcome. You okay. So there, we're leaving that jackass behind. Piece of garbage, awful crap man. Yeah, I should, I should, I really want to hire an editor to make highlights of the streams, because I just don't have time to do it myself, but, you know, I also don't have money to pay for that, so that's where you go. Okay, let's see. Uh, I kind of want to leave Craig for last, just because he's the college buddy, childhood friend thing. Which means Matt or Hugo. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> let's go with Hugo. Let, let me see if I can remember his voice. Because it was jaw forward, and then we talk a little hurt nasally, and then we talk, yeah. Oh, so it's a little bit, it's a little bit like a old-timey radio presenter. All the way from Toronto, California, comes the great Stroudman Man. Uh, <laughs> a little bit like that, yeah. Hello, Hugo, please don't make me cheat on people. I now get to Hugo's dad book page and type out a message. Hey Hugo, great seeing you at the barbecue. Wanna hang out sometime? I'll wait for a few minutes before the computer dings. How does he write? I'm so glad you messaged me and I definitely want to hang out sometime. But I have a favor to ask. Our class is going on a field trip to the aquarium today and I, one of our chaperones called in sick. Is there any possible way you can come by and replace them? Uh oh. I completely understand if you don't want to or can't make it, but I'm gonna be honest with you here. It's the middle school class. I need as much help as I can get. I think about it for a moment. Man, that's a lot of screaming kids that I'd be accountable for. And they're in middle school. Arguably the worst age to be. Amanda silently trudges into the kitchen and pours herself a bowl of cereal. <laughs> Hugo wants pictures of Spider-Man! <laughs> Well, if he was supposed to be, uh, I think I, I think I could do like uh, J.K. Simmons, uh, J.G. and Jameson once. Caviar. <laughs> I guess uh, it looks. Yeah, chat looks like it has a bit of a teacher kink, <laughs> hot for teacher thing. Yeah, I have a kink for Joseph. Well, then you will only be hurting yourself. By the way, I need some food. Just a second. Ah, there we go.
<sighs> okay. Ugh. Let's get back into it. We can all agree that we love Amanda, right? Yes, she's a very good daughter. <laughs> also, Cheshire Cat, don't feel bad about having a kink for Joseph. This is a wish fulfillment fantasy. It's okay. Just don't actually in real life sleep with any married pa youth pastors. That's a bad idea. <laughs> Morning, Amanda. Morning, Pops. <coughs> hey, how was middle school for you? Bad, but nobody likes middle school. It's three years of bad acne, crying, and being generally terrible. Uh, Everyone sucks. No self-awareness, it's just a bunch of hormonal teenagers locked in a gross old building for 40 hours a week, doing long division and starting fights over, I don't know, pizza day? Top 40s pop? Middle schoolers should be avoided at all costs. Hmm. What was your middle school experience like? I had my first crush in middle school, and I'm still bitter about it. Alexis Stuggs, you hurt me, and I will never forget. Mm -hmm. What she do to you? I stare off into the middle distance, remembering the 24 hours that we dated and the three times we held hands between class periods. <laughs> then I remember the bitter betrayal. Her leaving me for Arnold Birmingham. Him making me eat dirt in front of her. I don't want to talk about it. Hmm. See, middle school is irreprehensible. Wait, why are you asking me about middle school? Oh, Mr. Vega requested my help to chaperone his middle school class to the aquarium. Just wanted to know what I was in for. Hmm. You got to go to the aquarium? Are you kidding me? Hmm. The last field trip I got to go on was to the clam chowder factory. They didn't even give us clam chowder. They gave us square pizza at a clam chowder factory. Oh, is that why you won't eat clam chowder anymore? Huh? No, it's because Bobby Wellingham threw up into one of the vats of clam chowder and I'm the only one who saw it happen. It haunts me. Right, let's leave that story firmly in the past. Anyway, you should just do it. Mr. Vega sounds like you could really use the help. Plus, you get up to hang out with cool fish. Amanda, I get kind of weird about aquariums. The ocean makes me nervous. What, are you worried that a whale is going to pop out of the touch tank and swallow you whole? Don't you put fear in my heart. Well, do they have penguins there? Yes, they have penguins there. Yeah. Then it's settled. Penguins outweigh the fear of the ocean. I sit back at, down at the computer and let Hugo know that I'm available. He tells me to meet him at the aquarium and he gives me the address. I grab my keys, kiss Amanda on the forehead before I head out. <sighs> I arrive at the aquarium to find that the school buses have beaten me there. Preteens huddle around their teachers in small groups, yelling at each other and goofing off. Every teacher looks like they're at their wit's end. Eh. Hugo jogs up to me, jogs up to me, looking frazzled. I'm so glad you're here. Hugo! <clears throat> it's been a debacle all morning. We're short-handed and most of the kids won't stop screaming. As I'm sure you know it's the case with all middle schoolers. I lived through Amanda at 12. I'm all too familiar. Oh. Great. Well, it's you and me chaperoning a group of 10 kids. They're over there. Hugo walks me to a gaggle of preteens who are all sitting on the ground playing with their phones. They're not kicking each other like some of the other groups, so we're off to a good start. Um... Can you guys put your phones away? All of the kids look up for a moment to stare at Hugo. Then they go back to texting. At least they're quiet? Hmm. Too quiet. These guys are up to something. I can feel it. There's no way. They're too busy thinking about not getting food stuck in their braces to pull any stunts. It's middle school, after all. Mm -hmm. We'll see. The classes start filing into the aquarium, and Hugo hands out a massive stapled packet of pa packets of papers to each kid. These are due at the end of the field trip. Yes, this will be for a grade. No, you can't borrow a pencil. The kids collectively groan and grab the sheets from Hugo. What's in the packet? Hey. Honestly, it's just busy work so that the teachers can have a moment of moment's reprieve. I think one of the questions asks them to sit quietly for ten minutes to think about the Great Barrier Reef. Teacher hacks. <laughs> I like that. Wait, I thought you were an English teacher. What's the aquarium have to do with books? Oh. We just did a unit on the old man in the sea. Nothing quite in like introducing the kids to the futile perseverance of the human spirit by making them pet stingrays. Yes. It gives us time to check out some of the exhibits as well. Come on, they have a phenomenal selection of tropical fish. The forward jaw thing with him is difficult. Hmm. <laughs> while the kids sit on the floor and pretend to do their assignments while they text, Hugo and I wander over to a large tank filled with brightly colored fish. 
Hugo points to a brown and white fish with long spines. That right there is a lionfish. Did you know their stomach can expand up to 30 times in size? Whoa. Ah. Their spines are venomous, too. Nature is hardcore. Oh. You think that's bad? Take a look at this one over here. Hugo points to a spiny, grumpy-looking fish hanging out near the bottom of the tank. Ah. That's a stonefish, the most venomous fish in the world. And they just, like, keep it here? Oh, they're relatively harmless as long as you don't step on them. What happens if you step on them? Oh. Tissue necrosis. Ah. Cool. Nature is wild. Man, Hugo seems to know a lot about fish. I feel the overwhelming need to impress him. Hey, see that fish over there? Mm. That one? Yeah, that's the... Oh. Humphead Rasp. Yeah? Did you know that... <laughs> Paranormal fish trivia. <laughs> This fish sleeps upside down, but contrary to popular belief, he's not an actual vampire. That's the vampire fish. Oh. Wait, are you serious? Absolutely not. I'm playing it for the gag here. Ha! Oh. Ah, good one. Yeah, a little bit more of the S, I think. We lead the kids to another room. Sharks, sea turtles, eels, and other marine life swim around in massive floor-to-ceiling aquarium. The kids begin trying to take selfies with a shark. Hugo leaves my side to separate two kids and started fighting over a Capri Sun. I walk around the room, reading the tiny little blurbs about different fish swimming inside of the enclosure. After a while, I look around and see Hugo again. He's gazing up at the aquarium in childlike wonder. The ripples in the water cast blue moving shadows over his face. For someone surrounded by angry hormonal preteens, he looks completely peaceful. He looks really cute in this light. I hope he doesn't notice me staring. Wow. Hey. <clears throat> Beautiful, isn't it? That's too much. That's probably not true. Let's go with learning, because he's a teacher. A great many mysteries lie in the ocean. It is truly as fascinating to be able to observe it in a setting such as this. That's a very astute point, Skyen. I knew it. I knew it. Smarty Pants. Smarty Pants pretending gets to him. We have seen his weakness. Now we hammer it! We stand together for a moment, admiring the wonders of marine life. We, we, eventually, blah, 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 blah. we eventually make our way out to the touch tank room, which seems to be the only thing the kids are actually interested in. The tank is filled with a variety of horseshoe crabs, sea urchins, stingrays, and... Why are there sea urchins in there? They're poisonous! I stand around at the edges of the tank and keep a wary distance from the sea life. Who knows what kind of nefarious plans those horseshoe crabs have for my well-moisturized hands. Hugo rolls up his sleeve and sticks his hand in the water. Don't you want to pen some rays, Skyen? Oh, I think I'm good. I don't really... I think I should just stay over here and admire them from a respectable distance. Come on, it'll be fun. And informative. Don't make fun of me, but... I'm scared to touch them. I get weird when there's no glass separating us. I don't know what any of those things are, but I get the feeling they will probably bite me and my delicious hands if given the chance. Nothing in this tank can hurt you. The stingrays have had their barbs removed, the horseshoe crabs only eat little clams, and the anemones are perfectly safe to touch. Against my better judgment, I approach the tank. Slowly dipping my hand in my in through the cold water, I touch a stingray as it glides past me. See? Not so bad. It feels like... Fun, slimy leather? Things get a lot less scary when you learn more about them, right? I dive my hand into the back into the touch tank with a renewed vigor for ocean life. I poke at some urchins and feel the hard carapace of a horseshoe crab. I really want to touch a horseshoe crab. I really want to. They're so cool. My hand brushes against Hugo. What just fell down? Oh. Why did you fall down? Oh, well. My hand brushes against Hugo's as it would reach for the same anemone. I pull away, blushing. Hugo smiles at me. Hey, you're supposed to be touching the fish. Sorry, I just get a little carried away some... Wait. That girl over there looks suspicious. Why's that? Oh. Our backpack's usually that wet? Hold on. Susan, Susan, get back here! Hugo runs after a middle schooler and catches her before she can make it to the exit. Wanna tell me what's in the bag? Uh, textbooks? Wanna tell me what's really in the bag? Susan won't budge. 
I walk over to Hugo and the girl. I think he might need a bad cup. Look, kid. <laughs> I'm not afraid to hit a child! <laughs> Let's not do that. That's the no-nonsense. That's the one I want. But I think that one's better for him. But I want this one! I don't want that one. I want this one. Ah, okay. I had a bud go down for that once. He came out a changed man. Said he missed the bars. You're not a teacher. You can't tell me what to do. Ah. Yes, well, I am. Can you please put the back down? Next time we won't say please. Susan glares at Hugo for a moment before dropping her book back on the floor. It lands with a wet slap. We stare at it for a moment before it starts to move. Whoa. Hugo leans down and unzips the backpack. A horseshoe crab frantically scuttles out and across the floor. An employee swoops in, scoops it up, and places it back into the tank. She gives us a disapproving look. Jesus, Susan, what was your plan? I was trying to free him. To where? Outside? Where he was gonna die? Uh. Susan, go back to your group. We'll discuss this later. Yeah, and hands where we can see him. Susan sulks off, leaving me alone with Hugo. He gives me a pat on the shoulder. Oh. Middle schoolers have sticky hands. I doubt that's the first time that's happened here. Or the last. In the next room, we see a variety of smaller tanks. Sea urchins, tiny fish, and a rainbow of beautiful underwater plant life surrounds us. Ah. Look over there. Hugo points to some sea... Two, not so, two some seahorses gathered at the bottom of the tank. One of them is in the middle of giving birth. Ah. That's actually the male seahorse. Sort of takes fatherhood to a new level, doesn't it? Hey kids, come check this out. There's a male seahorse giving birth. A low murmur from the students. They just jump back on their phones. Hey. Fun fact, male seahorses can even give birth and they get pregnant in the same day. Man, we thought we had it hard. Hey. I wonder if they have to deal with the kids awkward teenage years too. All however many thousand of them. You seem to know a lot about marine life, oh. Hugo. Well, it's not really my specialty, but I do make a point to learn as much as I possible whenever I can. I think that learning shouldn't end when you leave school. We should challenge ourselves to find out more about the things we don't understand every day of our lives. Because if you stop learning, I don't think you'll ever be able to grow or change as a person. Ah, good point. But I still don't trust the ocean. We'll get there. We finally make our way over to my favorite part of the tour, the Arctic exhibit. Do we get to see the penguins? Ah. Yes, we get to see the penguins. Hell yes. Wait, hang on. Wait, what? Wait, hang on. What did that say? Oh, damn! Druxy, thank you so much! I could not pass up this donation goal. Plus, I'm really enjoying these... Thank you! That's really generous of you. Thanks! Hey, did that... Yeah, that got us there. In fact, it got us past it. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I guess I know what I'm doing on stream after we're done with the game. Our group of kids run around the exhibits. They won't stop tapping on the glass of the puffin enclosure, trying to get their attention. For at least a few moments, teachers, chaperones, and students alike seem to be having a great time. What was I so worried about? This isn't so bad. Whoa. Hugo suddenly grabs my arm. Oh my god, there's a student in the penguin enclosure. Wait, just kidding, it's very bad! Is it one of ours? Mm. It most certainly is. Molly Henderson, Susan's friend. I look over to the penguins and see a determined-looking kid crouching behind a rock. She's hiding just out of sight of one of the employees. Over on the side of the enclosure, I see the door to the exhibit ajar. Was it unlocked this whole time? We gotta stop her before the staff sees and bans her school for life. Hugo looks around. I'll create a distraction. Hugo runs toward the puffin exhibit and addresses the entire room. Everybody, 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 I have an announcement. The whole room turns toward Hugo. Um, here's a few facts I bet you didn't know about penguins. Everybody just stares at Hugo, confused. Well, this is my shot. I run into the enclosure and am greeted by a cold blast of air. Psst, hey! The girl whips around to look at me. Her nose is pink from the cold. You can't be in here! Neither can you! I try to walk over to the girl, but the ground is so icy that I just end up slipping. I catch myself before I hit the ground, but the girl still laughs at me. Contrary to popular belief, penguins are birds! Birds are traditionally known to fly, but penguins cannot. So I can understand some confusion when we're discussing the birdness of penguins. <laughs> the crowd is still somehow enraptured. 
Kit, what are you even doing? I'm letting the penguins go. They deserve freedom. Where are they even going to go? They're going to live in my closet. Look, I just don't even have time to argue about this. We got to get out of here. Not until I save a penguin. A little known fact is that penguins only live in cold climates. Uh, with some exceptions. They, so they don't all live in cold climates if you're splitting hairs here. Did I mention that they don't fly? The crowd is starting to lose interest. I'm running out of time. Just bribe her. Just, I will give you $20 right now if you leave with me. Molly thinks for a second. Okay, well, give it to me right now. I reach into my pocket and pull out everything I have, examining each bill. Okay, well, I have 12 and some change. Also, there's a button here. Is that enough? Pay me the other eight later and we have a deal. We move to shake on our arrangement before I suddenly realize there's a wave of penguins on their way out of the enclosure. We're going to have to block these birds. Oh, good. Mini game time. <laughs> block that bird. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, this is a mini game. <laughs> I guess we're slapping pink. Oh, that's not good. How the hell was I supposed to do anything about that? I guess I'll just rapid fire. I am slapping so many penguins right now, there's something very wrong about it. <laughs> One of them got out! Oh no! <laughs> Bribery works! <laughs> Okay, uh... You're glad that's over. Just in time, too. Looks like Hugo is wrapping up his diversionary penguin speech. Oh. And that's why I think penguins are one of the best animals in the world. A few people in the audience clap out of a sense of duty. Everybody starts dispersing. Hugo spots us from across the way and runs over. Uh. Molly, what were you doing in there? I was liberating animals, Mr. Vega. You realize that the penguins can only survive in Arctic temperatures, right? You would have had a dead penguin on your hands. Well, um... Uh, it was the thought that counts. No, Molly, it wasn't. Molly turns to me. You owe me eight dollars. What? Just, I'll pay you later, kid. Molly runs off towards Susan. I suppose so that they can compare animal thief notes. Ah. You're not off the hook, Molly. Oh. Skyan, did you just bribe a child? I bribed a child. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> I did do that. Uh, yeah. Even if that might not get me in his good graces. It was the only way to get a howdy the exhibit. I'm not proud of what I've done. I'm not proud of it either, or of my penguin facts TM lecture. But at least we got her out. Oh. Well, let's just get through the day and out of get out of here. <laughs> oh, Lord. With the day finally coming to a close, the whole field trip is ushered through the gift shop and we make our way back out to the school buses. As we leave the aquarium and the kids load onto the buses, Hugo pulls me aside. Hey. Hey, Skyen, thank you so much for helping out today. You're a lifesaver. It was no problem. It was actually kind of fun. Ah. Let me make take you out next time to make it up to you. You like cheese boards? There's nothing on Earth more satisfying than a good cheese board. <laughs> Great. Well, gotta go make sure the kids don't steal anything else. See you around. These fucking kids, man. <laughs> good grief. I walk inside to find the house empty. Hmm. I wonder where the panda is at. Before I know it, Amanda pops in through the front door. What you up to tonight? Just doing some homework. How was the aquarium? It was an adventure. Some kid tried to steal a penguin. Ugh. We've all been there. I had to run in and grab her before the, any, any of the employees saw. Right. You got to go into the penguin enclosure? Did you steal a penguin for us? Amanda, no penguins were stolen, thanks to the valiant efforts of myself and Mr. Vega. It was nice getting to spend some time with Hugo, though. Oh. I'm surprised you helped complete a co covert up. He's usually co kind of a... Kind of a what? Kind of a stick in the mud? Nah, he's actually pretty cool. I had a good time with him. Alright, too much adventure for me today. I'm gonna go rest my eyes. Okay. You mean take a nap? 
There's a difference you'll learn when you become a father. <laughs> Looks like Paradise Lost just got found. Oh God! Why? Why? Who? Who would? Who would put a line like that in a thing? Who would do that? Why would you do that? Don't do that. You got dads. Indeed. Shave the game, and let's continue romancing Mr. Mustache over here. Okay, uh, da, 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 da. oh, chat went away. There we go. I should take Hugo up on his offer to hang out. I had a lot of fun with him at the aquarium. I type out a message to him on dad book. Hey, still want a cheese board? Hugo responds within a few minutes. Colin is still being a humongous shithead. He won't stop sending the same picture of Jackie Chan on the mesh shirt to the printer, and it's nice. It's a nice picture, but it's wasting all my paper. Ah, uh, whoops, sorry, meant that for another teacher. But seriously, he's insufferable. There's pictures of Jackie Chan everywhere. Save a couple for me. My Jackie Chan scrapbook is a little light on content, and I think this would really round it out. Ha, <laughs> let me get back to you after class ends. Well, guess there's only one thing to do now. Dad nap. I hop on the couch and turn on some antiques road warrior for background noise. I got this ornate cabinet from a yard sale in, for $5 in 1982. To be told that it once belonged to a Confederate general is a huge surprise. This will feed my tribe for weeks. I really like the way the appraiser's voice echoes through the mouthpiece of his leather armor slash bondage gear. Maybe this is an ASMR thing Amanda keeps telling me about. I drift off to sleep. I'm jolted awake by a dad book message from Hugo. Hey, sorry about that. Colin's in the principal office now. He says he knows Jackie Chan personally and that Jackie won't be happy to hear this. I get off work in a little while and I continue to be very serious about the cheese boards. I fumble out a reply. Yeah, so am I. Hugo and I work out the details and I'm all set to meet him in a few hours. Amanda walks in the door just as I'm about to leave. What's up, Buttercup? Just... getting home from school? Where are you going? Oh, I have a meeting with the board. The board? Uh, cheese board is what I meant. I'm getting cheese with your teacher. Will you be able to fend for yourself until dinner time? Yeah, I'll live. But only if you can talk him into going easy on me for the final. Sorry, buddy. That ball's in your court. What's in my court, you ask? Just a variety of delicious cheeses, meats, and their accompanying crackers. Maybe some olives. A little bit of fig jam. Ugh. Yes, yes, I get it. You're excited about the cheese. Sweetie, you'll get it one day. But now I gotta go see a man about some manchego. <laughs> Please leave. I walk into a f quaint French diner and Hugo waves me down to a booth in the corner. He looks pretty tired. Long day? Uh... Every day is a long day when you teach middle schoolers. Hmm? Colin started a gambling ring. The pictures of Jackie Chan were just a cover. He's bartering in those little, little rubber band bracelets that are also shapes. Is that the one that parents think means sex stuff? Those ones, yeah. But the reports are just the sensational news media capitalizing on the fears of the suburban parents, as usual. I don't know. At least I hope. Yikes. Hey. Right now, I'm very ready for some fine wine and delicious cheese. A waitress stops by and takes our order for the biggest cheese plate you have, for the love of God, just please put the cheese in my mouth, and recommends us some wine. Do you two want a scorecard for trivia? There's trivia? Yep, we're starting in a few minutes. Pretty much everyone here in here is playing. Oh. We'd love to play, right, Skyen? Uh, yeah, sure. The waitress hands us a scorecard and a few pencils before leaving. I might not be much help here. I'm not very good at... Being smart, I guess? <clears throat> Come on, I doubt it'll be too hard. Skyen. I turn to see Matt and Brian here with their daughters, looking like they're ready for trivia. They come up to our table to greet us. Oh, good lord. <clears throat> hey, guys! You all here for the old questions and answers game? Hey. Yep, we come here every week, but Brian and Daisy care of the team. <clears throat> Why did they go southern on him all of a sudden? I wanted to do more Californian. 
Carmen Cita and I just here for the cheese. Provolone 2, lost in New York, have been reigning champions for the last month. Man, Brian's graded trivia 2? That raises the stakes. Great name, though. Solid team name. That's Carmen Cita's claim to fame. It hurts me how good I am at puns. <laughs> like father, like daughter. Hey. You guys gonna give us a run for our money? Mm. We'll see what we can do. <laughs> I will destroy you. We're just here for the cheese, too. Listen, trivia is great and all, but we know the real trivia championships are the cheeses we ate along the way. I don't know if that's how that phrase works, but I understand and appreciate the sentiment. Oh. We'll have to think up a good team name, but I think this will be fun. Good luck! Brian, Matt, and their daughters head back to their table. Well, I guess we need a name. Um, Got any good ideas? Easy breezy beautiful Havarti like it's 1999. <laughs> ah, real monsters! Craigslist Swiss connections. Let's go with easy breezy beautiful. Easy breezy beautiful. That'll do just nicely. The waitress comes by with our cheese board and we revel in its glory. Already I can see a piece of cheddar with my name on it. God damn it, I'm getting so hungry. I pair it with some strawberry preserved and slide into dairy-induced dairy ecstasy. There's such a fine variety of cheeses and char charcuterie that I'm positively overwhelmed. A quick dip into the seasoned nuts, a slice of savory yet salty gouda, or perhaps a focaccia crisps topped with honey and goat cheese. God damn it, this game. I haven't had dinner yet, you bastards. I'm so happy. Hugo raises his glass at me. Yes. Cheers to cheese. Hey, hey. Oh no, it's him again. A middle-aged man in the backwards baseball cap, sunglasses, and cargo shorts jogs out of the back with a frenetic energy of a radio DJ. Everybody ready for some trivia? The restaurant cheers. Oh, man. Looks like everyone's really into this. That's what I like to hear. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Quizmaster Quinn. My actual name's Richard. I like, just like a rich alliteration. More cheers. I see some of you brought your children here tonight. That is cool. My children won't speak to me. Well, okay. Haha, <laughs> I am just joking around. Classic Chris Matogen humor. It's actually my wife that won't speak to me. She doesn't want kids. Let's get into some questions. The first category is literature. Excellent. You know who loved literature? My dead father. I looked up to him so much. More jokes. Classic Chris Master quips. Just trying to keep it light. Here, folks, it is just like my. I thought my wife was the light of my life. Hugo, you got this literature stuff, right? Hmm. Does Franz Kafka have an irrational fear of one day waking up as a large, grotesque, insect-like creature? Hey, metamorphosis. Yes? This is the continent that encompasses the realms of Gondor, Rohan, Mordor, and Lothlorien. Other notable sites include Isengard, the Murk Wood, and Rivendell. What is the Elvish name for this continent? Oh! Oh, shit, I know this. But I'm in doubt. God damn it. Help me, Google. Right, it was. Who was the writer who created Chaucer and John Carter of Mars? Edgar Rice Burroughs. Edmond Dante is as better known as this man. I genuinely don't know this. Like, Dante Alighieri is a tempting one, but... Hmm. I'm Googling this, by the way. Because, like, Wells didn't write under a pen name. And I don't think, I don't remember what the guy in Count of Monte Cristo is named. But it's not Dante Alighieri, because that's his real name. And Frankenstein's monster didn't have a name. He was, well, he was named Prometheus. Correct. Yeah, Googling it, it says that his name was Edmond Dante's. The quiz master walks around the room. I think he's doing crowd work. He stops by mine and Hugo's table. Whoa, nice cheese plate you got there. Thank you? How is that cheese tasting big guy? Uh, good. 
Haha, -ha, great! Cheese used to be my favorite food, but I developed a lactose intolerance later in life. I'm so sorry to hear that. I also developed clinical depression! Okay, dude, really? Oh. But people don't tell you to just get over your lactose intolerance, right? Nobody's like, have you tried exercising to get rid of your debilitating dairy allergy? Or you just need to choose not to let your throat close up when you eat brie? Um... Anything. Does that scan? I'm trying to workshop my routine here. Quizmaster Quinn wanders off to another table. Who wants to start the next round? More cheers from the audience. Of what the game is serving you. <laughs> Thank you. My roommate just gave me cheese and some salad and stuff. Mm. The next round is cinema. Oh man, I love movies. Sometimes I'll retreat into them for days on end because obsessing over a fictional universe is easier than engaging with my real emotions and problems. Frodo Baggins, am I right? Is he okay? Oh no. I think it's just his character, I hope. How's your cinema? Oh. Spotty, I don't know a lot about movies, but if there are any questions about bad horror movies, I can be of service. That's an interesting one. Oh. It's a bit of a guilty pleasure. In Return of the Jedi, what does Luke ask Leia if she remembers? Oh, son of a bitch. It's one of those two. Uh, come on, I know this. I know this. I'm trying to think through the scene. That was wrong, okay. What entertainer makes a fourth wall breaking appearance in the film Gremlins 2? Well, fuck if I know. I mean, given... It can't have been Charlie Sheen, because he wasn't that big back then. I don't think it's Boy George. Because, just because Boy George was... Was he ever in movies? Really? Like, he was never... Was he an actor? I don't know. I feel like it's probably Hulk Hogan. I oh, Man, it's so long since I watched Gremlins. Now I want to watch Gremlins again. Which of these 80s horror movies dies... Does, rather, not feature an Indian burial ground as part of its setting? Well, Pet Cemetery absolutely does. The Shining absolutely does. Poltergeist, I don't know, within the woods would probably. I don't think Poltergeist does. I'm gonna have to Google that one. Let's see. Yada, 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 yada. Yada, yada, ghosts. Yada, yada, yada. Yeah, because I don't think Poltergeist had Indian burial grounds. Correct. Yay, got it. Seems like we're doing pretty well, but we're neck and neck with Brian and Matt's team. Those guys are pro. I look over the table and give them a friendly but competitive nod. I lock eyes with Brian. He gets a much sterner nod. And the next category is wrestling. Okay, we're totally boned. Hugo grabs my arm. Wait, I got this. Huh? Man, you know who would want I would want to wrestle with? Literally anyone. I crave human interaction. Please put me in a chokehold. Ew. Keep your kinks to yourself, dude. Place, it has been so long since I have been held. I can only process my emotions by making jokes out of them. I eat cheese. I need a cheese just for a sec. Mm. Let's start the quiz. Remember that this is the lightning round. The first people to answer get the points. I look over to Hugo. He's focused. He's in it to win it. Question one. This 
was the original name of Stone Cold Steve Austin in his debut for the WWE. Ah. Hugo's hand shoots up. Yes, the enthusiastic one over there. Steve Austin debuted as the ringmaster. Oh. That is correct. Points to Easy Breezy Beautiful. Oh. Next question. The city was the location of the first ever WrestleMania. Ah. Oh. Hugo's hand shoots up again. Yes, the one who looks like he has known the answer for his entire life. Hey. The first WrestleMania the first WrestleMania was held in New York. New New York at Madison Square Garden in 1985. Correct. Another correct answer for Brace. Easy Brace Beautiful. Hugo's destroying these questions. He's so passionate about this. I've never seen him act like this before. It's honestly kinda hot. <laughs> Oh, a tough one. This title match went down in history as the shortest match at WrestleMania to date. Hugo jumps up, more excited than I've ever seen him. Oh. Chavo versus Kane. Ooh, sorry, Baco, but that is incorrect. The ask's answer is actually Daniel Bryan versus Sheamus at WrestleMania 28. No, that's absolutely wrong. The real record is Chavo Chav Guerrero versus Kane, WrestleMania 24th, March 13th. Fart 30th, 2008. Kane took down Chavo with one choke slam and pinned him for the three count. I will not stand for this travesty. So hey, man, I'm just reading from the card here. I don't actually write these. Well, you're still wrong. What are you, my ex-wife? The crowd erupts in laughter. Hugo blushes. He retreats back into his chair. Fine. Wow, Hugo seemed really fired up about that. Where did he get this encyclopedic knowledge of wrestling? How do you know so much about wrestling? Yeah. Oh, I, you know... You just pick stuff up. That sounds suspect, but it seems like he doesn't want to talk about it. I turn my attention back to the quiz master. I have food in my mouth. Ah. Food! Sustenance! Goddamn video game cheese platter. Alright, alright, alright! Looks like a we're down to the final category. And it's a close one between Provolone 2, Lost in New York, Brian and Matt high five, and Easy Breezy Beautiful. Hugo and I high five. We look over to Brian and Matt, Carmen Sita and Daisy all playfully give us thumbs downs and stick their tongues out. I eat a big chunk of cheddar without breaking eye contact to show them just how serious I am. The final category is cool animals. Animals, huh? I never could take care of another living thing. Hell, I can barely take care of myself. Haha, <laughs> I am falling apart. Anyway, here's the questions. The Canary Islands were named after what kind of animal? Right? Okay. Now I'm suspicious. I need to Google that. Because I know the right thing. <laughs> okay, so it is because because the, this was on QI. Like uh once again. And the thing about the Canary Islands is they're named after uh, the, the, a Latin word that means dogs. That's right. What is the last animal that appears in the dictionary? Uh... I mean, that one would be last. Sepra wouldn't, because that's an E, but... Said why? Correct. Oh, cool! That's actually a real animal. What mammal has the thickest concentration of fur in nature? I know that one. That is an otter. All oh, right, I'm just gonna come around and collect your scorecards, and we'll see who came out on top. Remember, the waiting team gets a $25 gift card to Phil's Auto Care. If you need a car part, Phil's will fulfill all your needs. Everyone oohs and ahs. God, I want that gift card. The quiz master goes in the back to tally up the score. I pick on what's left of our cheese plate. There's a bit of brie here that tastes absolutely divine on a cracker with a little bit of honey and dried apricot. Oh, oh my god. So, what are your plans after our big win? Mm, I'll probably retire, take Amanda somewhere tropical, drink something out of a coconut. Always wanted to do that. 
What about you? Probably take my winnings to Colin's gambling ring. Bet it all on black. Walk out of there with more rubber bands in the shape of animals that I know what to do with. Bold, but I like your style. Hey. You want the last piece of Havarti? Nah, that's all you. You definitely earned it. Eating more food. Nom. After a couple of minutes, the quizmaster jogged back into the room. Everyone immediately quiets down, waiting with bated breath for the results. Who will win the coveted gift card? I really hope it's us. Hey, everybody! We've had a great night. Lots of goofs, lots of laughs, and a little bit of light crying in the back, but that is neither here nor there. By a landslide, the winner of tonight's contest is... Easy Breezy Beautiful! Come on down and get your gift card for Phil's Auto Care, Well, Phil Nominal Service is... God, I can't do this anymore! Please just take the gift card! I motion for Hugo to go get the gift card, and he shyly slinks out of the booth to grab it. He pauses for, the mo for a moment and gives the Quizmaster a hug with a few pats on the back. The Quizmaster sobs just a little. Poor guy! Did Matt just pop into existence there behind the Quizmaster for a sec? Hugo makes a victory lap back to our table and gives me a high five. Easy Breezy Beautiful is unstoppable! Easy Breezy Beautiful is great! May Easy Breezy Beautiful reign for a thousand years! Hey, great work, guys. <coughs> you guys get awesome! <laughs> Will we be seeing Easy Breezy Beautiful again next week? I look over at Hugo, who smiles. Maybe so. We make a pretty good team, huh, Hugo? Hey. Hugo blushes. <laughs> Hugo and I walk back towards our cul-de-sac, basking in the glow of our wind and nursing our cheese-filled bellies. Man, we crushed it in there. Finally, and during the screams of young children for years on end have paid off, I will take my half of this gift card and use it to purchase many, many air fresheners for my car, which Ernest refuses to stop vaping in. I think I'll use my half to buy at least two tire pressure gauges to place in different parts of my garage. You never know when you're going to need one, and I prefer ha to have them within arm's reach. A fine plan. Shame about that one wrestling question, though. I'm just going to eat the last of my food. <clears throat> I'm not kidding. I plan to write, write a strongly worded letter to whoever employed that man. Come on, there's gotta be a story there. Um. What do you mean? You didn't even stop to think. You pulled that wrestling knowledge... <coughs> you pulled that wrestling knowledge out like you were at there at the ring yourself. Oh, uh, it's just stuff I know. Let's push a little bit. Hugo, I figured you'd be better at lying after dealing with every kid in school for as long as you have. I, uh, it's embarrassing. You know what's actually embarrassing? Not being able to explain basic algebra to your daughter. You know what's definitely not embarrassing? Knowing stuff about wrestling. Hugo um. sighs. Alright, alright, if you really want to know, just follow me. Oh, hang on. Just a sec. Okay. Hugo leads me to his house at the edge of the cul-de-sac. We step inside, and his house ex is exactly what I expected it to be. Neat and filled top to bottom with books and art. Ah, uh, welcome to my home. Sorry it's so messy. His house is actually spotless. I follow him down a hallway. What are we doing? Hugo opens up the door and usher ushers me inside. It's pitch black. He closes the door behind us. Oh my. Hugo flips a switch and I finally understand. Cheerio cabinets packed with inbox wrestling action figures line the walls, along with posters, cardboard cutouts, and every piece of wrestling memorabilia imaginable. A giant widescreen TV sits on a decked out media stand. I'm speechless. I look over at Hugo, who's hovering by the door, doing everything to avoid eye contact. It's, uh, this is really embarrassing. This is the coolest thing I've ever seen. Are you kidding? Look at all this stuff. This must have taken you forever to collect. Can I touch this? 
Go ahead. <laughs> Hang on just a sec. I pick up one of his replica championship belts and toss it over my shoulder. Do you smell what I'm cooking? Mm -hmm. I think the line is, it's meatballs. Sorry, I don't watch a lot of wrestling. I just think it's so cool how passionate you are about this. Oh, oh uh, uh, yeah, I uh, I am really, really like wrestling. He's blushing so hard right now. <laughs> Hugo, you bought the wrong, you brought the wrong kind of pizza rolls again. Looks like Ernest just got home. He's yelling in from the hallway. I can see Hugo immediately oh. deflate. I told you those pizza rolls have less sodium. I just want you to be healthy, son. Ernest comes into Hugo's wrestling room and looks around with disgust. He notices me and scoffs. I thought nobody was allowed in your precious wrestling room. I never said that. I just said you're not allowed to take the action figures out of their boxes and pose them so that they were having sex with each other. Ernest gets flustered. Yeah, well, whatever. I'm gonna go throw exit stuff. Have fun with your stupid wrestling crap. Ernest leaves, then a moment later pops his head back in the room. And your stupid friend. Ernest storms back out of the room. I hear a door slam. Hugo wearily runs his hand through his hair. Sorry about him. And sorry that I have to keep apologizing about him. He's just going through a phase, I guess. Um... I try so hard I try so hard to impress him, but it's obvious no matter what I do, he hates me. Ernest has a thing against authority figures, and you don't get much more authoritative than a teacher dad. My ex, he gets to be the fun weekend dad, and I'm just Hugo, who makes Ernest eat his vegetables and turn in his homework on time. Hey, you love him, and you're looking out for his best interests. Take it from one dad to another, someday he'll come to appreciate you. Maybe not someday soon, but someday. I hope so. Oh. Thanks for letting me vent. Hugo glances at his watch. Suppose it's getting kind of late. Let's do trivia again sometime soon. I would absolutely love to. I start to leave. And hey, thanks for showing me your wrestling stuff. Maybe you can tell me some more about it next time. Hugo oh. smiles. That would be amazing. I'll catch you around. It only takes me a minute to walk back home. Amanda is sitting on the couch reading a book about female photographers. Wow, I thought you didn't like reading. I don't. This book is all pictures. Ugh. And even then, my patience is being tried. Ugh. Do you get to eat all the cheese your little heart desired? I am a happy little cheese monster. But I made sure to leave room for dinner. Who wants breakfast for dinner? Yeah. Hash browns. Okay. Ah. Toast dipped in egg. Or a <laughs> blueberry pancakes. Well, only if you'll help me make them. You know I'm the world's best blueberry. <coughs> you know I'm the world's best blueberry sprinkler, and also totally amazing at heating up the maple syrup in the microwave. Now tell me all about the cheese board. Amanda and I spend the evening cooking an elaborate breakfast with everything we can find inside the fridge. I tell her all about the trivia, but leave out the parts about Hugo being into wrestling. I figure she would probably find some nefarious way to use that information for a better grade. <laughs> Looks like Paradise Lost just got found. No, it doesn't. Welcome. You've got dads. And anyway, my voice is better. <laughs> well, let's look at the time. Yeah. So, let's, uh, let's finish up with Hugo, and then we'll cut the stream there. I think it's a natural place to end. Ever since the first night at Char Charcuterie Pies, Hugo and I have made a point out of weekly visits to Trivia Night. Easy Breezy Beautiful has come in first place ever since, despite Provolone and 2 lost in New York's continual efforts to, to dethrone us. 
I've been able to do a complete overhaul of the interior of my car thanks to all of the Phil's auto, Phil's auto care gift cards we've <laughs> received. Air fresheners, car chargers, you name it. Amanda's riding in the lap of luxury. Aside from trivia nights, I don't actually get to see Hugo a lot. The end of the school year is coming up and he seems to be having a lot of trouble dealing with the stress of teaching. Well, okay, Mr. Man in a car out there. I should do something nice for him. Maybe help take his mind off screaming teenagers. Books? He likes books, but I would have no idea where to even start with that. He probably reads more books in a month than I have read in the past year. I know he's really into wrestling, but he's been reluctant to talk about it since he showed me his wrestling room. I know he's kind of shy about it, but maybe... Eh, uh, whatever. Let's roll the dice. I think I have a plan. <laughs> hey, hey, all right, folks. Looks like we finally have the points tallied, and we're ready to announce our winner. You know who else is a winner? Me, because I have finally seen just how beautiful and loving my wife is. A few weeks ago, all of the regulars staged an intervention for Quizmaster Quinn. We sat down in a circle and told him that we wanted to see him be better and love himself. He agreed to start going to couples therapy with his wife, and last time he told me that they adopted a dog together. <laughs> Jesus Christ, poor guy. I love you forever, my Quizmaster Quinn. I can't tell which version of Quizmaster Quinn I prefer. There were things to like and dislike about both, huh? And the winner is, for the fourth week in a row, Easy Brazy Beautiful. Oh. Hugo and I cheer for our small cheers. Hugo and I cheer our small slices of camembert, and I go up to accept our gift card along with an uncomfortably long hug from Quizmaster Quinn. <clears throat> my Easy Brazy Beautifuls reign be as long as wonderful as my marriage to my beautiful wife. Hmm. We make a celebratory round of high fives to the rest of the teams and sit down to finish our cheese board, savoring every last bit of burrata with pesto and slices of tomato. Hey, I got a surprise for you. Hmm. For me? Yes, and for once, it isn't more cheese. Oh. Well, if you think you can somehow top that, be my guest. I pull out a book that I've been carefully hiding in one of my pockets and slide it over to Hugo. Hmm. Oh. Hugo picks up the book and reads the title aloud. Um. Harry Butt's Crapper Keeper? I wanted to get you a book, but I figure you already own every piece of classical literature, so I thought this would be fun. For when you're pooping. What? Why? What? Oh my god. Okay. Oh. Hugo laughs. You should flip through it. Yeah, okay, good, good. You have, a, you have an ulterior motive. You have another plan. Hugo looks up at me and raises an eyebrow. After flipping through a couple of pages, he finally comes across the small gift I strategically hid inside. Oh. You're kidding me! Hugo looks around, worried that he made a scene. He leans in. You're kidding me. Hugo pulls out the wrestling tickets I hid inside of the Crapper Keeper. This is to the World Federation of Wrestling's Power Slam series. You've been working so hard lately, I thought you'd like them. Like them? Hey. I I love this. Thank you. But wait, there's two. Yeah, I figured we could go together. What? You, you'd go with me? Heck yeah. I'd need you to explain the final points of wrestling to me, though. Hugo gets up, walks around the table, and effortlessly picks me up in a big bear hug. Has he been this strong the whole time? Oh. Thank you. I let out a little squeak to sort of say, you're welcome. <laughs> that is adorable. Ah, yes, there we go. <laughs> yes, very good. He's a little blushy and extremely cute. <laughs> we drive about an hour to another city for the big event. Hugo spends the entire ride teaching me the basics of wrestling and the terminology I need to know. <laughs> so, it's fake, right? Mm. Well, yes and no. While wrestling in the act of hurting another wrestler is fake, the work requires a remarkable athleticism and oftentimes results in actual injury. Those people are getting hurt, sure, but not in the way we're led to believe. Historically, wrestling as we know it today was created by carnival workers to fix gambling, and the people who actually believed it to be real and would bet on these matches were called marks. And that we know it, that it's technically fake, but still choose to suspend our disbeliefs makes us smarts. Smarks. Smart marks. So, I should be watching this for the acrobatics? Oh. And the tension, and the drama, and even the storylines. I think that anyone and anything can tell a good story, you just have to look for the story. Even something like what we are about to experience will tell a phenomenal, sometimes understated story, despite the ridiculous premise. Wow. Hmm? What? I just... really wouldn't have picked you for a huge wrestling fan. I don't know. Nobody does. I get it. I'm the button-down teacher type. I like poetry and art history. I write dissertations on heavy tomes by Russian authors for fun. 
but I like wrestling. It's a big part of who I am, but because it's considered kind of lowbrow, I feel like I can't share it with anybody because they'll just make fun of me. Till now? Hugo smiles to himself. Ah. Eh, till now. Hey. Hugo and I enter the stadium and are directed to the upper level. After grabbing some snacks, we make our way back up the set of stairs. The further up we go, the more my heart sinks. I thought we'd gotten good seats, but by this point the ring looks like a postage stamp. We finally settle into our spots and wait for the match to start. Ugh, I'm so sorry. I thought I got us tickets to the lower level. I look over to Hugo, who apparently didn't even hear me. He's vibrating with excitement. Ah. This is so cool. I guess he doesn't mind. I have to admit, I've been too embarrassed to come to one of these ever since I was a kid. What's there to be embarrassed about? Everyone here loves wrestling. Plus, who are we even going to see that we know? We're like an hour out of Maple Bay. Mm -hmm. I guess you're right. So what do we have to look forward to tonight? Mm. Oh, man, the lineup is stacked. All the matches are going to be great, but the one I'm really looking forward to is the Eastern Dragons match. The Eastern Dragon? Yeah, he used to wrestle as Pablo Escobar, but I guess he eventually had to change it. Mm. Wrestler names are weird. He's yeah, actually an Iranian guy from Utah. Oh, so that's what your shirt's from. Yep, I've been following this guy since his debut as an indie wrestling league, and it's been amazing to see him rise up through the ranks and into the professionals. Who's he up against? The corporate shell. Technique-wise, I don't think he's that good of a wrestler, and I don't even think the fans like him. Certainly an interesting character, though. Oh. The stadium lights dim and the crowd starts screaming. Butt rock blasts through the sound system and some pyrotechnics set off around the ring. Ladies and gentlemen of the sold-out crowd in Mill Creek, Massachusetts. Who's ready to power slam? Hugo and I scream. We watch two wrestlers, the Southern Dandy and Johnny Snowman, walk out to even more butt rock. The Southern Dan Dandy mixes and drinks a mint julep in the ring before the match. The crowd eats it up. Oh. The Southern Dandy is from Maine. Is Johnny Snowman not from the North Pole? Mm. He's from Georgia, actually. After a long match, Johnny Snowman, who's dressed up like a muscular elf, does what Hugo calls a German suplex on the Southern Dandy. Did you see what that guy did to the other guy's face? Is he okay? Are they gonna be okay? Wrestling is a sport of communication. All these guys train together enough to not only know how to perform moves, but how to respond to them. It allows them to look like they're being hurt, but only be kind of hurt. The crowd cheers as Johnny Snowman pins the Southern Dandy and is announced as the winner. The next match features a, gen a wrestler named Generation Y2K who comes out looking like a hipster barista. He takes selfies with fans on the way up to the ring and pauses after everyone to post it to Instagram. <laughs> He's really playing up the millennial thing, huh? He's sort of the boogeyman to old-timer wrestling fans. His opponent, the old-timer, walks out. Oh. <laughs> the crowd seems to be divided in who they're rooting for. The old-timer pulls some pretty sweet moves after he takes out a walking cane from under the stage and beats Generation Y2K over the head with it. Up against the ropes, Generation Y2K blinds the old man with a flash on his camera phone and is able to pin him down to win the match. He takes a celebratory selfie with his unconscious opponent. <laughs> During a break, Hugo and I leave to get refills from the concession stand. We wind our way through the clusters of wrestling fans to get to the line. So, what do you think so far? The wrestling is cool, but I really like seeing you so enthusiastic. It's... Don't say hot. Don't say hot! Cool. You know, I'm kind of surprised. I was sort of expecting the crowd to just be a bunch of aggressive, sweaty older guys, but it's so diverse. I've even seen a bunch of families with their kids. Everyone looks super happy to be here. Mm. Oh yeah, that's how I got into wrestling. When I was a kid, my dad used to take me and the, my brothers to matches all the time. There's one gaggle of kids loitering in a corner that are exceptionally loud, even over the din of the stadium. Looking closer, I can't help but feel like these kids seem familiar. Oh god, I know these kids. They're Hugo's students. Uh, so don't turn around when I tell you this, but some of your students are here. Hugo immediately tenses up. Oh my god, I can't let them see me here. They'll never listen to me ever again. I position myself between the kids and Hugo, hoping that I can act as a human shield. I glance over at the group of children again and recognize that Colin kid. He kicks one of his friends in the shin and laughs. Man, that Colin kid is a piece of work. Colin? If he sees me here, he'll never let it go. He's a master manipulator. We have to get back to the relative safety of our seats. What's the plan? Create a diversion. Call back! I turn to Hugo. 
Hugo, I'm gonna draw their attention. While they're busy watching me, run back to the seats and I'll meet you there, okay? Don't get hurt out there. As Hugo begins to leave, I turn to the crowd of people and start stomping around, raising my arms, as if I were trying to frighten off a bear. Hey, everybody, look at me! I'm a big old wrestling fan who came all the way to, from Maple Bay to see this event! I wasn't that big of a wrestling fan to begin with, but in the time that I've known it, I've come to find it very endearing! I really enjoy watching those very oily boys get into fisticuffs, and I hope that you're all having a pleasant evening watching them as well! It's working. All of the people near the concession stands have stopped to look at me. I feel my social anxiety hitting peak levels. There's only a finite amount of time I can keep distracting people. Quick, think of something! <laughs> Just scream! <laughs> Let's do a cartwheel. Let's see how that shakes out. I summon every last piece of athleticism from my body and go from the, for the full cartwheel with a running start. I immediately fall over, laying spread eagle on the cold floor of the stadium. While people run up and ask if I'm okay, I spot Hugo darting through the doors and back to our seats. Mission accomplished. <laughs> Hugo and I sit down and breathe a huge sigh of relief. Phew, that was close. Now we can hide out for the rest of the night and enjoy ourselves in the comfort of anonymity within a large crowd. The lights dim again. Oh. This is the match we've been waiting for. The corporate shill walks out to elevator music. Oh my god. He's wearing a three-piece suit and sunglasses. Once he gets to the ring, he takes off his sunglasses and rips the sleeves off his suit jacket, flexing his arms for the crowd. One of the people from his entourage produces a graph chart and sets it up in the center of the ring. The corporate shill grabs a microphone. I got a message for the Eastern Dragon. If you'll refer to the graph in the center of the ring, you'll see a quarterly projection of how much I'm going to kick your ass. The whole crowd erupts. Now, if you'll direct your attention to the Jumbotron. We all look up at a PowerPoint presentation titled Kicking the Eastern Dragon's Ass, Key Performance Indicators. The corporate shill takes a laser pointer and gives a lengthy presentation on just how, how and why he'll defeat the Eastern Dragon. He showcases several well-utilized clip art graphics. That was informative. The lights dim again and pan flute music plays. I think it's a pan flute. I'm actually not sure if I know what a pan, pan flute sounds like. <laughs> the Eastern Dragon walks out from to cheers from the crowd. Aren't uh, pan flutes a Central American thing? Hugo shrugs. Oh. Wrestling. The Eastern Dragon stands outside the ring and grabs a microphone. Corporate shill. It's nice to see you again. More cheers from the crowd. That was a good presentation. The clip art was a very nice touch. He points to the corporate shill menacingly. I'm looking forward to a nice and exciting match. The crowd doesn't really know what to do here. Oh. He's, uh, he's not the best at trash talk, but I promise he's one of the most talented wrestlers you'll ever see. The match starts and it's just as exciting as Hugo had hyped it up to be. The Eastern Dragon performs some ridiculous aerial stunts that make me concerned for his safety. He does what Hugo calls a moonsault from the top rope onto the culprit's shill. The air in the stadium is electric as these two athletes rock arms and try to demolish one another. I can't help but get into it. The corporate shill pile drives the Eastern Dragon who looks passed out in the center of the ring. He climbs up to the top rope and motions to the cheering crowd. Oh no, he's about to do his finishing move! The corporate ladder! The corporate shill poses at the top of the ropes. The Eastern Dragon still isn't moving. Could this be the end of his young career? Get up, Eastern Dragon! Oh. You can do it, Eastern Dragon! <laughs> the corporate shill launches off the top rope in a huge arc. He brings his elbow down on the Eastern Dragon with the full force of a Fortune 500 company putting local vendors out of business. <laughs> uh, hang on. Wait a minute. Why are you doing that, computer? Please don't do that. The corporate shill pins the Eastern Dragon and the match ends. Hugo sinks into his chair. Man, he should have won that. I sit down with Hugo. What a match. Hmm? It was amazing. I, I think I'm a fan of wrestling now? Hugo looks over to me and our eyes catch. I'm glad. The event goes on and we have a little downtime before the next match. We decide to just relax in our seats to avoid the middle schoolers. It's unlikely they would ever notice up so the upper level nosebleeds. I look up at the Jumbotron. Oh, hey, they're doing the kiss cam thing. It zooms in on a bunch of cute couples who all do a quick smooch to raccoon cheers from the crowd. Aw, that's so nice. And then it zooms in on Hugo and I! Huh? What? What? <laughs> what do I do here? I look over to Hugo and see the same mortified expression on his face. The entire crowd is chanting and neither of us know what to do. Let's just protect Hugo's... I 
identity. <laughs> I jump in front of Hugo and start giving the camera the finger. They can't show that on television, can they? The camera immediately moves on. I guess all this sweaty, sweaty violence is fine, but a finger isn't. Thanks. I think. I sit down again, trying to ignore the dirty looks I'm getting for people who came for, here for wholesome content. So much for laying low, I guess. The rest of the match thankfully goes off without incident. Hugo and I eventually laugh off the kiss cam and get back into the wrestling. After the show ends, he convinces me to hang back and let the rest of the crowd exit so that we wouldn't risk running into Colin and his awful group of friends. <laughs> By the time Hugo and I walk back to his car, most of the wrestling fans have cleared out. The parking lot is surprisingly empty save for a beat-up car parked a few spots down from us. We warily keep an eye out for any stray middle schoolers as we hang out by my car. Man, that was an experience. Right? It's one thing to watch it on TV, but to be there in person is just... Wow. Thank you again. I would never have gotten to experience this if it wasn't for you. Just me and Hugo, in front of the car, in an empty parking lot. I look down. Kind of funny about the kiss cam, huh? Oh. Yeah, it was super funny. <laughs> but neither of us are smiling. We look into each other's eyes and I can feel a warmth radiating from my cheeks. We stare at each other for just a little bit too long. Hey, cool shirt! I turn around to see a guy in a hoodie and basketball shorts walking up to us, a duffel bag slung over his shoulder. I haven't seen one of those in years. Oh my god. Uh, yeah, I got it from a trade from this guy with a, from streetsmarts.net. I love that website. Someone always posts these awesome, super detailed breakdowns of the matches in the indie circuit. Have you seen those? The name's like, uh, JJ something. JD Slamminger? Yeah, that's him. Those, those are my write-ups. You're JD Slamminger, you're kidding. Oh man, I'm such a huge fan of your work. It's nice to meet you. The man vigorously shakes Hugo's hand. I'm, I'm honored. Oh man, I wish I could stay and chat. I have so many questions, but I'll PM you on the forums if I, if you ever want to talk shop. Absolutely. The man starts walking away. Hugo coughs nervously to get his attention again. Uh, is there any chance you could sign my shirt? The guy turns around and beams. Sure thing. Wait. It all finally clicks into place for me. You're the Eastern Dragon? I love your work! <laughs> Thank you, man. The Eastern Dragon signs Hugo's shirt, waves goodbye, and walks to his car. I stand there with my mouth open the entire time. That was the Eastern Dragon. He, he likes my work. Dude, you're like friends with the Eastern Dragon now. He's gonna PM me. Hugo and I high five. He's so excited he's shaking. Mr. Vega? Oh man, Colin and his cronies just pop up out of nowhere. Oh no, here we go. Sweet man, Chago. Colin, nice to see all your, your friends all the way out here. What are you doing here? I don't see a library anywhere near us. <sighs> I, I was watching the Power Slam series with my friend. Ah, Mr. Vega likes wrestling? What a fart knocker. Actually, that's pretty cool. Shut up, dickweed. Nah, man. That's actually rad as hell. Who are you just talking to? Probably one of your stupid book nerd friends. Actually, he was talking to his good buddy, the Eastern Dragon. All of Colin's friends gasp. Guys, come on, he's lying. There's no way the Eastern Dragon would hang out with these losers. Oh, oh yeah? How did I get his autograph, then? Colin's friends lose their minds, screaming their heads off. Colin is red with anger. See you in class, bitch. Y you you can't say that. Who's gonna believe you? Hugo and I hop into the car to the tune of more children screaming. We laugh all the way home. Bam. Nice. Hugo and I descend the, st the stairs of his home into his wrestling man cave where we both crack a beer. We're both winding down after an exciting evening. So if you were a wrestler, what would your persona be? Hugo answers immediately. Yes. JD Slaminger, my forum name. I gotta represent my literary roots. My costume would be a tweet coat, my finishing move would be a catcher in the eye, where I poke my opponent's eyes out and call them a phony. <laughs> Good reference. Wow. Hmm. I've given it a lot of thought. What about you? Hmm. I would be... Bomb Clancy. <laughs> Dad. Mario Bratali, goddammit. <laughs> it was a it was a nice wreck on Colin there, by the way. Probably just dad, because I'm boring. My character is really boring. I don't even wrestle. I just throw dad puns at the opponent until they submit. Nice to meet you, hungry. I'm dad. You know. I'm just now realizing that I don't know any actual wrestling moves. You know I could teach you some. Hey, Bob, but you, 
You, I know what that means. I'm game. Hugo and I square up in the center of the room, ready to go at it. I'll go easy on you. On Dad? Absolutely not. And before I know it, I'm on the floor. Hugo wraps his legs around me and squeezes. I can't move. This is so painfully obvious. <laughs> mm. This is a figure four leg lock. If I were applying full force right now, you would be in extreme pain. He effortlessly twirls around again and grabs my arm. Good lord, he's strong. Any movement on my end is useless. And this is an arm bar. You're, uh, pretty good. Oh. You can tap out anytime you like. Not a chance. Hugo flips around one last time on top of me. He hooks his arm onto my leg and presses his body down on my chest. Hey. And this is me pinning you. Our faces are inches apart right now. I can't tell if I'm breathing heavily because of the physical activity or because of something <clears throat> else. Tap out, you coward. No, hell no. I'll lean forward and kiss Hugo, who is just as surprised as I am. <laughs> I pull back, a little embarrassed, but he kisses me again. He slowly releases his submission hold on me and cradles my face in his hands. He presses his forehead against mine and we laugh. I guess we both win. Guess so. I pull him back in for another kiss. Do you have any more moves to show me? I think I might have a few. Doo -doo. <laughs> I'm JK rolling with the light. Oh no, god damn, go away. <laughs> my, my. Ugh. <laughs> I see the chat is enjoying that one. I'm glad. Sky N. Quizmaster and, like, spin master, I guess. Hey, hey, who's ready for a crazy graduation party? You, uh, you don't have to be on right now, Quinn. It's just a party. What do you mean? It's the, uh, you know what? Keep that energy. Hold it close. You deserve it. Just like me and my loving wife to serve happiness, right? You know what? You know what? And... <laughs> Looks like you've settled into this neighborhood quite nicely. Yeah, no thanks to you, jackass. Go away. I turn to Ernest, looking like he has something to say. Hey, Ernest! Uh, thanks for being nice to my dad. Whoa. People are really mean to him sometimes. I mean, I guess I am too. But, uh, he seems happy when you're around, so, uh, that's cool. Well, jeez, Ernest, I don't know what to say. You know, I think people got you pecked wrong. You got a soft side. If you tell anyone about this, or that you saw me weeping at the theater, I'm gonna th set your trash can on fire. There it is. Also, you don't know me. Before I can respond, Ernest walks away, a cloud of vapor trailing behind him. Well, that was at least a little pleasant. As the party starts to wind down, I take a seat on our back porch step. The sun is setting, and everyone seems to have eaten their fill. Okay, I don't want to cry right now. I take a seat next to Hugo as the last guests make their way out of the party. Cool shirt. Hey. Thanks. It reminds me of a special night. So the secret's out, huh? Hugo likes wrestling? You know, I was really nervous to come here dressed like this, but everyone in the neighborhood, they were nothing but accepting of me and my hobbies. It turns out that Craig is a huge fan too. And Colin told everyone at school that I'm into wrestling, but it actually backfired on him. The kids have a weird sort of respect for me now. A few of them even answered to be asked me to be the sponsor for the wrestling club. Oh. Not that the not the Olympic wrestling, the wrestling that I like. I actually really like both, but there's an important distinction, and I think you know which one I'm talking about. 
See? Just goes to show there's nothing wrong with being open about what you like. Mm. I agree. And as long as I'm being open, I'm also a huge fan of very handsome dads who throw great parties for their kids and love a good word jumble. I blush. And I'm a big fan of... Quick, think of something clever. Hugo's? This Hugo specifically. Hugo laughs. Yes. He drapes an arm around my shoulders and pulls me closer. He plants a soft kiss on my forehead. I'm happy here. Me too. Hugo and I watch the sun dip below the horizon together. Hey, do you think maybe later you could show me some new wrestling moves? Oh, could you not be obvious? Mm -hmm. Sky, how about I show you my plump hand, pump handled pop? You? No. I can't help but giggle. What's that? Hey. You'll see. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure he'll see. Good lord, Hugo. Lewd. <laughs> this was excessively wholesome. This was, this was a night's palate cleanser after fucking Joseph. God, that guy. Ah. <laughs> uh. Well, there's two dads left, which um, we'll probably be able to handle tomorrow, actually. Which is when we'll be back with more Dream Daddy. <laughs> Hopefully, less fucky wrestling references. <laughs> Oh, Lord. Ugh. That was a good route. That was very, just extremely nice and wholesome. It's very uncomplicated and just very nice, which I which I like. Like, because, like, with, with the other dads so far, there's always been a little bit of a complication. Like, in there somewhere, like, with Robert, there's the fact that he's massively emotionally compromised. With Joseph, there's the fact that he's a cheating bastard who's just trying to get his dick wet. <clears throat> And with uh, Damien, there's the whole thing about, you know, helping him come to terms with his self-identity and stuff. And, like, that's where, like, Hugo is the one who seems, like, most uncomplicated. Where there's, like, the least of an issue there to sort of drive the storyline. Which I think is nice. Like, that's sort of the low-key, chill one where you don't have to deal with anything heavy whatsoever. <laughs> Still, there's a couple of good ones left. Hopefully. I mean, <laughs> I guess we'll find out. Let's see if he gets a pinup. Joseph didn't get a pinup, and I'm pretty okay with that, really. <laughs> oh, good lord! Okay! <laughs> they do not go half and half on that one. I think that may be the, like, outside of Brian, like, this one might be the most overtly sexual, like, with the unbuttoned pants. And Brian is the only other one who's, like, actually shirtless. Good lord. I, I mean, I'm more interested, honestly, in the cheese and ham, because that looks absolutely delicious, and I am so hungry right now. <laughs> anyway. Ugh. That, my friends, is the end of that stream. <laughs> so thank you all very much for tuning in. We'll be back tomorrow at the same time to perhaps finish up the two remaining routes. Depending on how long they take, obviously. Good lord, I'm gonna have to remember how to do Matt's voice again. Ah. Anyway. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being here. Thanks for, for the donations. We managed to make that donation incentive, so I'll be doing at least one more extra stream where I draw something sappy or romantic with the dads. Yeah, and I guess I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>